GHSA State Football Championships are presented by the Governor's Office of Highway Safety, reminding you to buckle up, Georgia, as we welcome you back to Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta for the 7A State Championship game as the Milton Eagles take on the Walton Raiders. And good evening. I'm Matt Stewart, joined by former Auburn Tigers All-American, NFL first-round draft pick, and 15-year pro Wayne Gandy. And Wayne, for this state championship game, we've got a rivalry game. Now, it's a little bit of an unusual rivalry, and this is just the second time these two teams have played in the last eight years. Used to be region rivals, but the last time they played, Milton obliterated Walton 52-17 in the 2021 semifinals. The Raiders haven't forgotten. And the Eagles still remember and throw on top of this, it's also a neighborhood rivalry game. These two schools are just 11 miles apart. And I'm excited about this game. I'm sitting here. I'm nervous. Two communities with full support of these teams. Both of them come here. Mirror images of each other. When you look at their rosters, superstar quarterbacks, receivers, cornerback, let's kick it off. Let's do. Walton, we'll start with them first. 14-0 for just the second time in program history. Last time they were 14-0. They lost to Robert Kim Dietschy and the Grayson Rams in the 2011 state championship game. But all along, you talk to Daniel Bruner, their head coach, the entire season, they have felt like this is their year. And a big reason why is their three-star quarterback, Jeremy Heklinski, who's committed to Wake Forest. We've watched him blossom from a sophomore gunslinger into the GPB Sports Offensive Player of the Year. Video kind of numbers, 3,711 yards, 48 touchdowns, only four. Yeah, three interceptions on the season. He can throw the ball from any angle, kind of like Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, a star and a maker, and you love his fiery attitude. There, Hecklinski on the defensive side of the ball is Ashton Woods. He is the fifth member of his family to come through the Raiders program. He's a four-star linebacker committed to the North Carolina Tar Heels. Big and physical, sideline to sideline. He is the heartbeat of this defense when they need a play. Tonight, his ability to cover on the tight end is going to be key. But Mr. Woods, write that name down, a superstar in the making. All right, let's talk about the Milton Eagles. In a lot of ways, this season's been very similar similar to 2018 when they won their one and only state championship. They lost two of their first five games. And when we saw them in the regular season finale against Lambert, quite frankly, they were not very impressive in the first half. But Coach Ben Reeves went in there and lit them up at halftime. They've been a different team since then. And a big reason why is their four-star junior quarterback, Luke Nickel, who's committed to the Miami Hurricanes. Who cool hand Luke, the big physical quarterback who can make all the throws down the field. Big key for him in this playoff has been his ability to run the ball. That has sparked the offense and defense emotionally, and that's where this team has to start with their emotions, and Luke is the commander of that. Now the Eagles' secondary is really going to be tested by Heklinski. They're going to need a big game from this young man, junior three-star cornerback Dylan Lewis, committed to the Tennessee Volunteers. All the moxie, all the confidence, a guy that likes to get up at the line, jam and pump. He has his hands full tonight with this receiving core but with Ty Redman his counterpart on the other side both committed to Tennessee I can't wait to watch this matchup of Walton's receivers against Milton secondary indeed it's Milton and it's Walton it's going to be a lot of fun like we say around GPB better buckle up Georgia all right let's send it down to Nikki Noto Palmer she's already buckled up on the sidelines Matt Wayne, look, you guys just referenced that these two programs might mirror each other from the community standpoint, academics, athletics, and everything that comes with that. But here's the thing. I talked to both coaches about that, and let's just go ahead and agree to disagree. But here's where they are similar. They both have young, passionate coaches who can respect each other's games. Yes, there is star power on both of these rosters, but both believe they have the edge. Walton's coach Bruner, he told us this week, well, I went to Roswell. There hasn't been a whole lot of love in Milton in my heart. Meanwhile, Coach Reeves reminds us the Eagles have been here before, and they have won a state title. Here's the thing, y'all. Respect runs deep. Reeves alluded to iron sharpening iron these two coaches they invite each other over in the summer for seven on seven camps because to beat the best that's how you do it right that's how you're going to be the best and we're about to watch the best of the best tonight it's going to get chippy out there matt wayne you guys get comfortable maybe grab a few snacks because we're about to watch a heck of a matchup <laughs>
Indeed we are. Walton won the opening toss. They have deferred. That means that we're going to see the Milton Eagles on offense for the first time. And how about this for a shift in the power axis of 7A football? For the first time since 1985, there is not a Gwinnett County school or a South Georgia school playing in the state final in the highest classification here in the state of Georgia. All right, let's get started. The opening kickoff is brought to you by Buckle Up Georgia. Buckle Up Georgia, seatbelt save lives. And here we go. Kickoff coming down at the two yard line. And the return by Mark Esley to the outside. And Esley, nice return out across the 30 yard line. And that's where the Eagles will put the ball in play for the first time tonight. And here is Luke Nickel, their fabulous quarterback. And the thing that's been the difference maker for Luke is his running ability late in the season. His ability to take the ball when they need a play, especially in third and short. And when the energy level is down has been key for me when he runs the ball. He's been a great runner, runs between the tackles, big, 6'2", 200 pounds. It really sets the tempo for this team. A cerebral quarterback. He is so smart. He can step up to the line, recognize the defense, get in and out of a play in a hurry. 66% completion, 3,700 yards, 38 touchdowns, just four interceptions. GPB Sports All-State. On first and 10, going to go to the air, complete to DeBron Gatling, who's committed to Texas A&M. Let's take a look at Milton on offense. It's brought to you by Regions Bank. Rushing, Heineke, Kasmark, Moans, and Scott. No big prospects up front. T.J. Lester, the running back, the son of former Pittsburgh Steelers great Tim Lester. C.J. Wiley, a four-star wide receiver, a junior, one of the best in the state. Gatling, Esley, and Ryan G., a four-star tight end committed to Wayne's alma mater, the Auburn Tigers. And there's Luke Nickel on the run, going to pick up the first down. Justin Kruger making the tackle, but not before he moves the sticks. Five-yard pickup for Nickel. And that's the aspect of Nickel's game in the playoff that has been key for them right here. Nice read there. Ashton Woods coming with the pressure, just tucking the ball. Physical runner there, as you can see, to pick up that first down. Nickel committed to Miami on August 11th. Over 21 other offers, including Georgia Tech and Florida State. Gonna pass. Throws. It's completed the 48-yard line. Nice catch by Wiley. Ball comes out. Let's see who's on top of it. Walton claims they got it. Wiley comes off the pile with it. Wiley was the first man up with the ball. And let's see, the officials, this might get a review right away. Take another look at it. Nice protection up front. Great delivery of the ball right there to Wiley. Let's see if he's down. The ball is out right there on the turf. You can see. But Wiley fighting for the ball. But not able to bring it back in. And Walton gets the turnover. So the Raiders get it. Jake Thorner, the next generation of great linebackers for the Walton Raiders, the junior, kind of the, the sidekick to Ashton Woods all season long, comes up with the fumble recovery. And here's Jeremy Heklinski, and this is why he was the GPB Sports Offensive Player of the Year. Just uh, the ability to see the field, the arm talent, as you can see. He can throw dimes to the big tight end there, Hunter Teal. The full package is Heklinski. So first and 10, and the handoff goes to Makari Botterford. And Botterford all the way down to the 29-yard line. And Wayne, to me, that's the difference in the Walton and the Milton offenses. Walton has a strong running game. Botterford right here getting behind the big fellow over there on the left side, Daniel Calhoun. Opening that hole, and that's the aspect where the advantage may go to the Raiders with Botterford and Williams in the backfield. Very talented backs to go with this explosive receiving core. First and 10 from the 29. Botterford going to get it again. And Botterford drives down to the 26-yard line. Jack Lawson making the tackle 
for the Eagles as we take a look at the Raiders up front. Daniel Calhoun, four-star offensive lineman. He will enroll at the University of Georgia on Saturday. So he's three days away from the start of his college football career. Bonneford, we mentioned, he's committed to Memphis. And then a bevy of great wide receivers, Sonderman, Bride, and Lloyd, and Hunter Teal, one of the most underrated and most productive tight ends in the entire state. Just all kind of toys for Heklinski to get the ball down the field too, but these two running backs, as I talked about, Williams and Bodiford, are key for them tonight. Heglinski throws it on a slant inside the 10 yard line, and that's Jordan Bride, the Navy commit, coming up with a big catch. Great right here by Bam Bride on Dylan Lewis, out on the edge, keep the ball low, throwing it right there in tight coverage between the corner. Lewis and Jones right there is Heklinski. Beautiful right there by Bam Bride. Very quickly, first and goal to go for the Walton Raiders. Jude Cascone, the tight end, now lines up as a fullback in the I formation. Ball is fumbled. And let's see, did the Raiders get on top of that? So we've had a little fumbleitis here in the first three minutes of the game. Cascone. Lining up in the eye behind the, the quarterback and right there just the timing is off on that turn right there. How's going? Cascone running into Heklinski. Just a little wrinkle there, Walton. We've yeah. seen him a couple of times this year. First time I really have seen them run out of the I formation. Yeah. No, I haven't seen him run out of the I formation since maybe Rocky Hidalgo was the head coach <laughs> the last time they were in the state championship game. Second down and goal. Spin move, Heklinski throws to the end zone, and there's his man for the touchdown. Hunter Teal gets the Raiders on the board. These guys are BFFs, and this is his security blanket in the red zone. A little bootleg action here with Heklinski, feeling that pressure of Jack Lawson right in his face, still leading his tight end, Hunter Teal, here in the back of the end zone in the strong hands right there of Teal going up at the top of that catch, bringing it down. What a combination over the last couple games Heklinski and his best friend Teal have become. Benai with the PAT, and it's Walton cashing in on the turnover by the Milton Eagles, turning it into a touchdown. Heklinski to Teal. You might hear that some more tonight. And a 7-0 lead for Walton. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is presented by the Governor's Office of Highway Safety, reminding you to be safe on every trip. Buckle up, Georgia. Sweetheart, please don't forget to wear your seatbelt. I got it, Mom. It's a really nice day living in the right space. Breathing your face got me feeling some kind of way. Blink of an eye, so many tomorrows can disappear. Buckle up for your future, every trip, every time. A message from the Governor's Office of Highway Safety. High school seniors, your Georgia match letters have been mailed and the possibilities are endless. Visit your student dashboard on gafutures.org to see which of the 45 colleges and universities made your list and claim your spot today. This is my family. Everyone on my team knows that we're going to fight, we're going to be relentless, we're going to be aggressive, and we're going to be determined to get a great result. Mabra Law. DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign is all about Georgians standing together for substance misuse prevention. Be kind to your mind. Live drug-free. Learn more about healthy alternatives and living a drug-free lifestyle at garedribbon.org. You can't turn the ball over in a game like this, and that seems like an obvious thing to say, but it bears repeating after Milton turns it over on their opening possession, and Walton goes five plays, 52 yards for the first score of the game. The Raiders offense doesn't need any help. They don't need any gifts to get the ball down the field. Explosive players all around. That's going to be big for Milton to be able to have success in turnovers. You cannot give Jeremy Hecklinski any kind of field position. What a drive right there early on 
by the Raiders. Second state championship, third state championship game appearance, I should say, for Ben Reeves, who you saw right there. But his first as a head coach, he was the OC when they won it in 2018, and he was the OC in 2021 when they finished as the state runners up, losing to Travis Hunter and Collins Hill. So the ball plays down to the 40, and here we go, another kickoff. Coming down again from the one. And did not even make it back to the 15. Great kick coverage by the Walton Raiders as we take a look at the Breda Pass management. Keys to the game, Wayne, when the Eagles have the ball. Do us. Play Milton football. We're a four-quarter four team. Just keep your identity. Don't feel like because on the other side they have such a big offense that you have to go out and do other things and get the ball out on the edge to your playmakers and Gatling and Wiley. And for Walton on defense, you got to eliminate the big plays. That's how Walton, excuse me, that's how Milton likes to move the ball in big chunks with this receiving core. You got to keep everything in front of you and make the tackle in space. So Luke Nickel. Goes back out there on offense. Opening possession. One carry, five yards, two of two passing for 18 yards as he clears the ball out there to Esley. And Esley up to the 20-yard line. Mark Esley, 5'9", 150, senior wide receiver. Four offers, including Tulane, Indiana, and Toledo. He's really kind of the energizer bunny in this offense for the Eagles. The X factor, one of those guys that you want to get the ball to in different spaces so he can test the defense ability to rally and tackle. Second down and four. Line to gain is the 25. Nickel looks downfield, now thinks about running it, now will run it, and he's going to get the first down with a stutter step. Thorner there to make the tackle along with Hudson Beard, but Nickel picks up the first down. Walton's defense is brought to you by Regions Bank. Ugoque is committed to Yale. Kruger, Halpus, and Gregory, a four-star, committed to South Carolina. We talked about Woods. Thorner's already getting some offers from Georgia Southern and Miami of Ohio, and in that secondary, these guys are going to be tested as well tonight. Farrell, McCrary, Standard, Sonderman, and Bride. Good job by Nick on that last play. If that defense on the back end is going to play soft, you've got to take what they give you right there, getting that first down. First and 10. And the ball is fumbled again. This time, Nickel gets on top of it. So uncharacteristic here. Do you think this is nerves? Nerves right early on. You come out, you have a turnover. High on the snap right there. Never really rallied the uh, went up and got the ball back on that bad snap. But it's nerves all around for this team. They know the kind of challenge that this Raiders uh, offense brings. They feel like they got to score each and every time. And that's why they got to keep their composure and make this a four quarter game. The Eagles center is J.P. Kasmark. He's a former band member. So this offensive line for Milton has been a work in progress from the beginning of the season, has really come together as the season has gone on. But the point being, a couple of years ago, they had kind of an all-star offensive line of college prospects. That's not the case this year. Luke Nichols' helmet is, is off. It looks like someone pulled it off, so he's going to be able to stay in the game. Matt, I won't talk about how I feel about the helmet rule. We know. <laughs> I've been with you now for how many years? I know how you feel about the rule. Uh, but nice job here running between the tackles. Look at the strength right here on this run and right here at the end as he's trying to get fight for the yardage. Hellman just comes off right there at the end as Walton makes the tackle. Oh, man, I don't think anybody pulled it off. I think they kicked it off. They're going to make him come out of the game. A foot or leg hit him in the helmet and it popped off. So Dylan Warren, the seldom used senior, comes in on third down and five, desperately needing to convert a first down here. So you want to be conservative and not too risky with the backup in there, but you need to get five yards. And they're going to go to the air with Warren. He's going to throw underneath the G, and G catches it but does not get the first down. And that's a tough situation right there to put Warren in early in this game. Not a chance to even warm up or keep yourself warm. And now looks like Luke Nichol is going to come back out here. Yeah, you, you'll remember it. So I thought it was third down. So now it's third down. No, it is fourth down. That, that's right. It was third down, and now it's going to be fourth down. You'll remember in the Valdosta-Colquitt County game we televised in the second round, 
Valdosta was getting ready to score. Their quarterback had to come out. Let's see, they're going to go for it here. They line up to go for it, or they're just going to try to pull them off sides is what they're going to do. And now they're going to either take a timeout or delay a game. They could take a timeout. Timeout. So Milton. That didn't first work. Time out of the half. Yeah. Ben Reeves was not happy with all that that transpired with the uh, with the helmet. We got Dave Reynolds here with us. He's back after working the 5A uh, state championship game. Good job for you and your crew. Enjoyed watching that. So uh, explain to us the helmet rule and, and convince Wayne why it's important. I don't know how to convince Wayne, but what I will say is <laughs> uh, for him to stay in the ball game, we need to flag on the field uh, for him to stay in the ball game. So if it hits the ground and the helmet comes off, he has to come out. Um, maybe ends of no contact has to come out as well. Yeah, because if his helmet gets pulled off, then you must have face masking involved. I would agree. Yeah, so <laughs> that would be a penalty. So no flag on that play, and he had to come out. And it so, seems like those moments aren't critical, but right there on that third and five, you wonder what the play critical. would have been. That no, was a critical, critical play critical. early in the game it was. to lose your best player for a play. I know we're protecting the players all about protection, so I'm not, I'm not – uh, Eve trying to erase that, but that was a big play so early in this game for that offense to convert. So Milton punting here, and nobody's back for Walton at all. So just kick it as far as you can, and the play gets blown dead. Have a false start here on Milton. False start, offense, five yard penalty, still fourth down. And that's a big penalty. Because Weiser just booted that thing all the way down to the 16 yard line. He flipped the field. So you lost that. I'm guessing that Walton will have somebody back this time. It's like Christian uh, Farrell is back there. This time on the short catch, try to even field the ball, give him the short field. Yeah, that was a 50 yard kick they just erased. So they missed that opportunity to flip the field and pin him deep with that penalty. Another soaring kick. Farrell goes back and fields it at the 33, takes it to the ground to make sure he catches it. 37-yard kick that time. And, Wayne, let's take a look at the Breda Pest management keys to the game when the Walton Raiders have the ball. Walton, you just want to protect the football. No turnovers, no fumbles. You're explosive. You know you can go down the field at any time and score and be efficient. A high percentage of passing. You stay in that 65 to 70 percent if you're Jeremy Hecklinski. And for Milton, try to confuse Hecklinski. Changing up pre-snap, post-snap, so that he can just uh, be a little confused as he drops back and where to go with the ball. So first and 10 for the Raiders, ball at the 32. Handoff goes to Austin Williams. Man, he got plugged in the hole at the 35-yard line. Jack Lawson bringing the lumber, committed to Carnegie Mellon. Laying down the law right here, Jack Lawson, the senior, coming up, delivering the blow right there. That's the kind of physical play he has provided for the Eagles in his career. What an outstanding young man, smart, big GPA. Ball goes to Lloyd. Lloyd finds a seam, then gets hit and knocked down by A.J. Benton at the 42. That should be enough to move the sticks for the Raiders. Benton spent the past week in a walking boot. Cameron Lloyd, what a season he has had. Big numbers here. So explosive. These are the kind of plays that he has feasted on this year. Just want to get him the ball out in space with his elusiveness and his speed. Yeah, he's another guy that's just incredibly under-recruited. Does have offers from Navy, Austin P and Wagner. Handoff goes to Austin Williams. Austin Williams jitterbugs his way down to the 45-yard line. And this is what I was talking about. Walton has a superior running game. They got the Thunder with Makari Potiphar. They got the Lightning with Austin Williams. Great double team over there by Thorner. Nick Thorner, the right guard, and Sam Trainer, the right tackle. Austin Williams, so underrated. Just a stud. Uh, he could be starting anywhere else. The way that he runs the ball, the quickness, the explosion, great in the pass protection as a little guy. 
and even in a non starting role has rushed for over 1000 yards this season. First and 10 Walton on the move again at the 45 handing the ball off to Austin Williams. He's going to dive forward and pick up four more at the 41. Let's take a look at the Milton Eagles defense brought to you by Regions Bank with Cohen Spencer and Bell up front Caleb Bell the son of former Georgia Bulldog Kendrick Bell Corey Stewart's committed to Kansas she got Benton to me to me to many a pardon me and Lawton and then Lewis we were talking about him in the opener Lester Jones and Redmond Redmond's also committed to the Tennessee Volunteers they've got both of the junior cornerbacks from the Milton Eagles locked up and you can see they're up pump coverage they are very confident that those guys can play man to man out on the edge. Ball goes to Bodiford, and he's going to get two more, maybe three more on the play, down to the 38. Makari Bodiford committed to Memphis back on June 18th over seven other offers, including Troy and App State. Highest ranking ESPN three star running back. The thunder of this thunder and lightning, Bodiford. Six feet, 205, power back, thick legs. You, in this third and short, you expect the ball and, and this Milton defense to key on him. Third down and three. Ah! Heklinski going to spin and fire and overthrow Lloyd, who was open briefly, and it's going to be fourth down. I think they're going for it here, don't you? Great coverage there by Tamini. Uh, and you expect they're going to go for the way their defense has started this game and the confidence they have in Jeremy Heklinski and, and this offensive line if they decide to run this ball in this fourth and two situation. Yeah I would think the playbook is wide open for him right here. They got so many options with all the weapons they have. And no flag was dropped. Runs up in the hole and gets the first down. A.J. Benton has to wrestle him to the ground. Kruger Pruitt up front, Thorner inside. Great vision here to the cutback lane. Potiphar right there, and then the physicality at the end. He knows how to get a first down. The senior tailback, the power runner, seeing the vision, then lowering the shoulders for the fight for another two or three yards. So first and ten, running hard behind that offensive line. They have generated uh, 25 yards of rushing, 27 yards of passing so far here in the first quarter. Been a pretty conservative approach from the Walton perspective. It's a team that averaged close to 50 points per game this season. Timeout, Walton. And there First is Daniel the Calhoun, number 77, 6'7", 350, the senior committed to the Georgia Bulldogs on July 5th, over 19 other offers, consensus four-star, highest ranking, 24-7 sports has him rated the number five interior offensive lineman in the country. So Wayne, he's playing left tackle for Walton, and in all likelihood, he'll be playing inside for the doll. Most likely to be on that right side right guard maybe slide him out at that height 6 6 he's very agile nickname is the beast and that's how he plays we've seen him a couple of times I think maybe uh, he's flattering himself with that 350 uh, I, I see at least 365 on him big man physical can't wait to see him at the next level and, and going to UGA which has just become O line you here in the last couple of years and that's the Raiders venerable offensive line coach Bill Letton who was a head coach himself up in Kentucky won state championships at Lexington Catholic. He is a big reason why this Walton Raiders offensive line is what it is and looks like an O line coach has that look of never satisfied. That's how an O line coach always look. They have that scowl of never being satisfied first and ten ball at the thirty two. Heklinski in the middle, popped up in the air, nearly intercepted on that back line by Makai Jones. And we talked about this secondary. It, it, it has capable Ty Redman out there on the coverage right here. Jeremy Heklinski with the play fake, just too high on that throw right there. Ty Redman, 6'2", 180, junior, committed to Tennessee to three-star. Him and Lewis make a tandem going even this year and next year for Milton. Yeah from a size standpoint oh, 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 oh. Milton matches up very well in the secondary 
with the Walton wide receivers outside of Wiley who's a big wide receiver uh, and you know Gatling's got some good size but none that are extraordinarily big outside of those two Keith Hammond is your referee working this 7A state championship game tonight. That was Ken Clampett, the referee working the game here tonight. Second and long right here. Jamie Hexlinski been off on a couple of the throws here in this drive, going a little high on his passes. Oh my gosh! He didn't see Tamania, the dump truck, come barreling through the roadblock and smash Hexlinski. Hayden to many of you coming in with the late dog right up the middle of this defense right here. Left side sliding with the center, not seeing to many of you with a big hit right there on Jeremy Heklinski. You could see him coming late on that dog and delivering the punishment. Chin scrap is off. That's as big a hit on an offensive player as I've seen since Jadavion Clowney. Third down and 26 now. Heklinski showing his toughness. And was able to get up Delay and run another play. And a, and Five yard penalty. Third down. And you feel maybe a delay, that delay of game is just a function of that hit. That was a big hit. It took a little minute there for Heklinski to get his his feel back, his surroundings. Third and 31 right here. Look for a screen or a draw by Walton in this offense. Pressure coming off the edge. They set up the screen pass to Botterford. He's not going to go very far as Ty Redmond comes up and makes the play, and it's going to be fourth down. Once again, A.J. Benton coming with the pressure. His Milton defense in this drive is not sitting back. They were playing man out on the corners. And they are letting these linebackers go try to disrupt Jeremy Hecklinski. We'll follow him to make sure he doesn't go to the medical tent because that was a big hit that he took. And it doesn't look like he's seeking any attention. He's a tough dude. So is Luke Nickel. That's the thing that you love about these quarterbacks. Not only are they, you know, very smart, very good passers, they're tough too. Milton getting nothing on the punt return right there. 43 yard kick and great coverage by the Raiders downfield. And that is the final play of the quarter. That was Oliver Skeen who got down there and made the tackle to pin the Eagles the inside the, the 10. After one, Walton leads the 7A, 7A final, 7 0. While we've got a quick break in the action, did you know that the same area of just one football field can contain up to 95 termite colonies? That's why you need Breda Pest Management to defend your home. Breda, the official pest control of high school football. Only in Cartersville, Bartow. Three Smithsonian affiliated museums, Barnsley Resort, and an authentic downtown full of unique restaurants and shops. The perfect destination for a memorable staycation. Only in Cartersville, Bartow. Half of the nation's opioid overdoses happen right at home because people don't understand the dangers of taking an Oxy or Perk with a glass of alcohol for stress or to sleep. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. I've been checking food labels for years. I like to buy local and I like to buy healthy for my family. So I started checking the labels on our clothes too. Did you know synthetic fibers like polyester are pretty much made of oil? No thanks. I look for cotton now, which grows right here in Georgia, a major source of the world's cotton. Cotton is natural, renewable, sustainable, and buying cotton supports Georgia farmers. Good enough for me and my family. This is my family. Everyone on my team knows that we're gonna fight, we're gonna be relentless, we're gonna be aggressive, and we're gonna be determined to get a great result. Mabra Law. 
Matt Wayne, you know, the Raiders and Jeremy Haklinski, they came up short on that drive. But here's the thing. He is so calm in the pocket. And I talked to his mom this morning, Amy, and she told me that he has never had fear. And in regards to football, she said that she saw that come out in second grade. There was a quarterback playing ahead of him in little rec ball. But the quarterback, whenever he would mess up or throw an interception, he was a little distraught. Keep in mind, they're second grade. However, when Jeremy went in, he just shook it off. And he came off the field and he goes, OK, what's next? And that has followed him into his career and where he is tonight. Third and 31, doesn't matter. Interception, we haven't seen that. Doesn't matter. Just watch how he handles his mental capacity throughout this game. Thank you, Nikki. Eagles back on offense at the nine yard line. They haven't really been able to get anything going yet. That's the first time they've run T.J. Lester. Lester rumbles up there for a first down. And you expect this Eagles offense with T.J. Lester and Amari Anderson. They're very capable of running the ball. They're not the fastest of back, but they're powerful. They're low to the ground. 5'9", 190 there is Lester. Take a little pressure off of Luke Nickel having to make each and every play by getting the run game going. Lester's numbers right at 700 yards rushing on the season. That's about where he was going into the regular season finale. He got hurt in that game that we televised. And Lester gets pushed back. After getting stopped at the 10 yard line, going to take a loss on that play of about four yards. Wendell Gregory on this play, Jack Thorner, Tyson McCrary coming out of the secondary, son of former Falcon Fred McCrary. You can see them coming with the run blitz right there. Those are the reads that Luke Nichols is going to have to make on that RPO. Wendell Gregory, four star, rated as high as the number seven. Edge rusher in the country by ESPN committed to the South Carolina Gamecocks last January. Nickel throws to the far sideline, missed his man. That was Tristan Payne, who has been a real spark plug for this team over the last six weeks of the season. Payne and G in the same area. Not really sure where he was going with that ball. Typically when receivers are that close in proximity someone is wrong ran the wrong route right there. Third and long here third and 14 for this offense deep in their territory only 35 yards of offense so far for Milton in this game an offense that averaged right around five touchdowns a game. Third and 14. Nickel fires. It's complete to Gatling and DeBron Gatling up to the 33 yard line. And that's a first down on a long throw by Nickel. Nice job by Gatling settling into this zone. Nickel buying time, getting outside the pocket, knowing where the sticks were. We're Gatling on that play, just playing and selling in that soft zone to pick up that big third down. Gatling committed to Texas A&M last December. In fact, it was a year and two days ago that he committed to the Aggies right after his junior season. Had 42 other offers, including Alabama and Georgia. Up top, going deep for Payne and nearly caught, nearly intercepted. That was Sonderman back there, who actually had the best shot out of, of the two. And great job there by Payne breaking up that interception by Wyatt Sonderman. Luke Nickel right there getting away with this, just kind of airing it out. If Payne doesn't get that hand on, trust me, Wyatt Sonderman, who's one of the better hands on the field as a receiver, is going to come up with that interception. Going to bring up second down and 10. Milton in the state playoffs beat Duluth, Collins Hill, Colquitt County. That was considered an upset by a lot of folks. And then on the road, they knocked off Grayson. Nickel going to run. And that was a big part of it. Nickel in the running game just really, I think, caught the Packers by surprise. They weren't ready for that. And Nickel doing just a great job walking up to the line and checking into a run play for himself when he scanned the defense. If he's only has five men in the box, he's going to take that and go with the quarterback sneak, as you saw in that last play. He's just counting white helmets to see whether he should run the ball. On the other side with Walter, you can see them kind of moving around, trying to bait him into different looks. 
Yeah, those rushing numbers for the season don't tell the story on Luke Nickel. He had over 100 yards rushing against the Packers in the quarterfinals. Ball is bobbled and caught. And breaking out of the tackle as Esley gets to the outside. It's a foot race, and Esley with a spin move down to the 15-yard line. Great read here by Luke Nickel. He saw the pressure coming out of the slot off of Esley. Esley coming underneath. Being able to deliver the ball. We talked about Esley being the X factor right there. You can see Nickel, he saw that pressure. Got Esley on a one on one matchup with Sanderman. You'll take that anytime. Showing you the speed, the little chili bug right there. Fiery, emotional. That's the kind of game you need out of this receiving core. 47 yard pickup, ball at the 16 yard line. And the officials step in and blow the play dead. The ruling on the field is under video review. We'll bring Dave Reynolds in here to tell us what they're reviewing. Yeah, they might be reviewing the spot. Uh, the end of the run might be off by uh, a yard or two. So that's my best guess watching it live. So well, nothing in the catch. See Esley coming underneath, bobbled the ball. Are they reviewing whether maybe his knee hit? Back there when he was trying to catch the ball. Let's see where he goes down. He's down right there about. It's between the 15, 15 and the 16. 16. So it's the ball is pretty much where you think it is. They could be reviewing whether his knee went down right here on the bobble. Let's yeah. see if that. Knee, oh it did. Uh, I think it did. I think his right knee scraped the turf. More look from. I think it's, the it's other all about angle, let's take another look at it and it's another all angle. about when he gets control of the ball as well is his knee hitting while he has control is that I think it right does there. right there yeah. you can see it and in the field this field turf with the little tire gives beads, it away gives it away each and every time because those those little beads are going to spray when your knee hits the ground. So, Dave, is that what they're looking at, the spot back downfield? Yeah, very good. I think we have video evidence right there to overturn the call and bring it back where, uh, with possession, knee on the ground near the uh, logo middle of the field. Great catch, great route there. Working underneath. Saw the pressure come and had to run that hot, rock, yep. hot route underneath. And I'm quite sure they're checking also to make sure he is it first down as well. Is that it? Let's see one more time. Is that right knee at that last moment? After video review, the ruling on the field stands. That's called. Oh, time. wow. Wow. Well, I guess the uh, gentleman in the replay booth didn't think that was substantial enough to overturn the call. Did look like to me like the knee scraped the ground. So they'll put the ball at the 16 yard line for Milton think they catch a break right there but that's the way it goes sometimes with replay. Going empty backfield once again we've seen in this formation this is one of Luke Nichols favorite formations to run the ball out of. Sprint out throw caught inside the five. That's Esley again they go right back to him and the arm talent right there Luke Nichols just a little rollout. Rolling into this throw, finding Mark Esley's 5'9", 150 there. Tight coverage going in between three Walton defenders is Luke Nichol. So first and goal to go for the Eagles at the three yard line after a 13 yard pickup. Got a chance to cash in, get the matching touchdown right here. Hand off to Lester. Lester stretches and scores the touchdown. T.J. Lester, you know that feels good for him. It's been a tough last five, six weeks of the season. Been banged up the second part of this season. T.J. Lester there, great vision to the cutback. The, the junior, hard to tackle in these situations is Lester running behind his pads. And he can smell that end zone. Been a long time since he's had that opportunity. He's going to get his team on the board. Offered by his dad's alma mater, Eastern Kentucky and Indiana. 
and the PAT spins up there and good and we're tied at seven. So a big play from Nickel to Esley that withstands review and then Lester punches it in from three yards out. We got a tie game in the 7A state championship. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Cigna Healthcare. Cigna Healthcare is a proud partner of Georgia Public Broadcasting and Football Fridays. Cigna Healthcare's mission is to improve the health and vitality of those we serve. Visit Cigna.com to learn how you can support your physical and emotional well-being. DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign is all about Georgians standing together for substance misuse prevention. Be kind to your mind. Live drug-free. Learn more about healthy alternatives and living a drug-free lifestyle at garedribbon.org. This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Georgia. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the GHSA. Come over here. Certainly the Georgia High School State Championships in Mercedes-Benz, Wayne, has been a win-win. The crowds have come out, of course. Indoors, the game's not impacted by the weather. As the Eagles capped a nine-play, 91-yard drive with the 31 or the three-yard touchdown run by T.J. Lester, and that's your governor's red ribbon campaign scoring drive. They knocked close to four minutes off the clock. Nickel was three of five, passing for 78 yards in the drive, and the linchpin again was that 47-yard pass and run to Esley that uh, held up under review. The X factor, the guy that just want to get him out in space, his ability to create with the ball in his hand great job on that drive throwing the ball by Luke Nickel and a better job by Mark Edgley making himself big in the completions booming kick gonna go 69 yards to the back of the end zone my goodness what a kickoff right there and the ball is going to come out to the 20 yard line for Jeremy Hecklinski and the Walton Raiders now tied up at seven with the Milton Eagles. Now, where is Hetzlinski after that big hit? We haven't really seen him throw the ball, but he's a gamer. He's tough. He's the toughest player, as tough as anyone on this field, is Jeremy Hetzlinski. He's going to play to the end in this game. Let's see how he is throwing the ball down the field. Four or six passing, 35 yards, the 11 yard touchdown pass to Hunter Teal for the first score of the game. And Austin Williams gets swallowed up up there by Caleb Bell. Caleb Bell, 6'3, 245, junior, great size. Son of Kendrell Bell, former UGA star, played with me at Pittsburgh. We used to call his dad contact. Because <laughs> no one hit like Kendrell Bell. Were you there <laughs> when he was the uh, NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year? Yes, I was. He was one of those guys as an old lineman. You never wanted to see him dog late because <laughs> he was a punishing hitter. Heklinski in a pocket, going to sling it sidearm. There's Hunter Teal again. Second time they've connected, but there's a flag down on the field after Redmond made the tackle. The flag is downfield at the 26-yard uh, line. They're going to have a illegal procedure. Not sure Cameron Lord should have been on the line of scrimmage. An eligible man downfield, offense, five yard penalty, replay second down. So Dave, tell us what happened there. Yes, yeah, so we might have a receiver at the bottom of the screen who was covered up, and then we had a four pass beyond the line scrimmage, so he could not go downfield. So, might have been a misalignment right there by the uh, Raiders. Cost them uh, a big completion to Hunter Teal, 
backs them up to the 15 and a half yard line. Heklinski slings it and caught at the 28 yard line. That's Sonderman. First time he checks in in the pass catching column. He's back. Jeremy Heklinski sitting in the pocket, taking the big hit there by Caleb Bale. A little sidearm action to get it out to Sonderman. And with Heklinski, these are the kind of throws that he can make. He, 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 it seems unconventional sometimes, but that is no mistake. That's how he can deliver the ball from any angle. Sonderman's numbers a little bit down this year. He's been beat up his senior season. Committed to Jacksonville State. Bodiford going to run for the first down at the 33-yard line. Nice job of Bodiford in these situations, running behind his pass. Tough runner, just hard to bring down. As Coach Bruner talks about him, country strong. Just one of those guys that have that natural explosion and toughness inside. Started his high school career at McEachern. So first and 10, ball at the 33-yard line for Heklensky and the Raiders. Another sidearm sling. That was more like a sinker ball. It, it dropped off the plate as it, if you were using baseball terminology, as it got to the receiver. Great read there. Saw Cameron Lloyd working underneath, just not able to throw, step into that throw. That's why it was short. He was really in the pocket trying to throw the ball side arm, but just didn't have enough on it to deliver that pass. Like we said when we started, uh, Walton has kind of felt for a long time that this was their year. Big run by Austin Williams. Williams, one of those seniors. Heklinski, a lot of those seniors, they've been playing together since the sixth grade. And Austin Williams is just that guy. That's a lightning bug. He is the lightning of this thunder and lightning. Great vision. Low to the ground. Excellent speed. Love the burst once he hits that line of scrimmage. He has great bursts at, at that point. He hits the hole fast. First and 10, ball at the 46. Blitz is coming. Bride catches it. Gonna pick up about six on the play. Jack Lawson, A.J. Benton, Tamenia, these linebackers are not shy. They are coming with the pressure. Nice read, sidearm delivery once again out on the edge to Bam Bride on Dylan Lewis. Nice stop route there, reading the blitz. You got to get open quickly for your quarterback. Second down and four. You can see how the Eagles are trying to mix it up. On head, Klinsky. A lot of guys walking around, moving to different areas. Austin Williams up the middle, going to get the first down as he runs through contact and gets to the 43-yard line. And that's one of the things that Ben Reeves told us that he wanted their defense to do with Heklinski. They wanted Heklinski's pre-snap read to be a lot different than what he saw when he snaps the ball, the post-snap read. Yeah, you have to try to get him to make a decision early with one set and then move guys around and these linebackers with their speed and size, size and ability to cover can do that. Hand off again, Bonifer gaping hole and a stiff arm. Bonifer inside the 10, finally brought down at the eight by Ja'Cory Stewart. Great popping up front by the offensive line. Big hole here created by Calhoun and Kruger. Watch this, wiping it all down is the big fella right there, Daniel Calhoun. Bodiford out in space right there. <laughs> You're not going to get him to run out of bounds. He's going to be physical. Just wash it all down, big fella. Take everybody to the party. Let Bodiford cut behind you. Out in the open, the three-star Memphis commit, Bodiford. He is a beast when he gets out there in the open field. First and goal to go now, and Bodiford gets it back, got hit in the backfield, was able to lunge forward. Going to bring up second down. Walton, 15 run, nine pass. Are you any surprised about that 
what these two running backs know you, you have to take with the defense and, and the challenge is to show this kind of patience when you talk about this is a top notch secondary when you, you got three three stars in the secondary uh, Lewis and, and Redmond headed to Tennessee so you got to be patient and, and just come in here to win this game and running the ball might be the way in this first half as it's shown now Hicklinski going to run it. And everybody takes an opportunity to get a shot in on him right there. Forward progress is stopped. Whistle had blown by the time the ball came out. Forward progress was stopped. Right here, this is a, a kind of a trick play when you think about Jeremy Heglinski. Him on a quarterback draw right there. Everybody in white trying to get him a little piece of him. He is the man for this team and Milton knows it. Everybody is trying to get a little chip on him. I would think he's a very polarizing figure. If he's on your side, you love him. If he's not on your side, you probably hate him. The, the Johnny Manziel effect kind of a little bit as far as his attitude. Two on the play clock when they snapped it and Bonneford crashes into the end zone for the touchdown and the Raiders are back on top. Great blocking up front right there on that right side. Clearing the way. Watch this right side right there. Pulling Sam Trainer to get to the outside. Kick out block. Big hit there by James Harvey, the backup guard as well. You get kind of that kind of movement for Bakari, uh, Makari Bodiford. It's going to be a touchdown. PAT is up and good, and it's 14 to 7. Walton. Extra lineman in the game. Kick out block trainer right there, following behind him. James Harvey, Patrick Burris with the kick out, running behind his pads into the end zone. Standing blocking by the O line in that drive. As we said, Walton has been run heavy. In this first half, behind the legs of Bottomford and Austin Williams in this offensive line. Eleven plays, 80 yards, five and a half minutes. Walton on top by a touchdown, now with just 239 to play. And remember, Walton is going to get the ball first to start the third quarter so really kind of imperative right here that Milton goes down there and gets some points and that's not typical Walton they, they love to get the ball win the toss and get the ball to the offense they, they have shown a different side of themselves in this game playing physical tough on defense and getting the running game going offensively kick coming down at the five yard line and an open lane for Esley runs it up to the 37 38 and a big return by Mark Esley who's given them some energy in that kick return game tonight. Nice job of Esley reading the blocks getting up field. He's already showing you what he can do out in the open field with his speed as we marked him the X factor in this game one of those guys game to game you just don't know. If he's going to be the best guy on the field, some nights he, he overshadows all the three and four star guys with his performance. That was a 31 yard kick return. The one guy that Ben Reeves told us he thought would have a big game, Ryan G, has not yet. Empty box backfield once again here for Luke Nickel. As we've seen, very dangerous in running the ball in this kind of formation. Lee. He did make the catch at the 41 yard line. Only a three man brush right there. Nice job. That combination so far has been key to this offense. Nickel to Esley. That was a five yard pickup right there. Nickel six of eight passing for 102. He's also their leading rusher with 20 yards on five carries. Underneath on the drag and pain gets upended by Beard. Good protection, good pocket right there. Better tackle on pain out in space. 
No pressure reading that drag route coming underneath. A big tackle there. Timeout, Milton. By the Hudson second Beard. Time out of the half. What's funny about that is the coaching staff, Daniel Bruner, and the coaching staff for the Walton Raiders have this saying around campus it's that football is easy for Hudson Beard because just a really smart player not the most athletic guy not the biggest guy he's also a wrestler but understands leverage understands what it takes to win the game you tell him one thing one time and he gets it football's easy for him and that's and, and that's the kind of player that you love to mix in with a lot of talent that guy that you just know as we call him sometimes steady Eddie he's, he's confident he's, you can rely on his intelligence out on the field. Let's take a look at the Milton Eagles resume It's presented by DBHDD overall 12 and 2 the region six champs for the sixth consecutive year at 5 and 0 oh, finished up the regular season number eight in the 7A top 10 in the GPB Sports Bowl won the 2018 state championship. This is their third state finals appearance one and one all time. Learn about safe usage of prescription opioids, DBHDD. Third down and four. Line to gain is the 46. Nickel going to try to run for the first down, not going to get there. Wendell Gregory was there to stop him, and then a host of Raiders jumped in there to help finish it off. Feeling that pressure off the end, Tyson McQuarrie coming off the edge here, trying to get up into the line before he gets there, was able to evade that tackle, but ran right into the arms there of Wendell Gregory, the four-star South Carolina commit. Did you see the blocker on Wendell Gregory? Derek Scott was doing his best to contain that beast and just could not prevent him from making the tackle on that play. 6'4", 225, just an exceptional athlete with an exceptional work ethic is Gregory. Different times you can just watch him take over games. So talented, him and Ashton Woods have provided so much for this defense in their career. Let's take a look at the Walton Raiders resume. 14 and 0. Like I said off the top, just the second time in program history they have been 14 and 0. Last time that happened was the last time they were in the state finals and the only other time they were in the state finals back in 2011. Region 5 7A champs, they went 5 and 0. They finished number 5 in the 7A top 10. After the quarterfinals, they were the highest remaining ranked team in 7A after all of that quarterfinal carnage that we saw in the third round. And Milton punting on fourth and three. Walton did use a timeout. They wanted to get some clock in their back pocket so they can use it to try to score again. And the kick going to be downed at the 26. That's Ryan G who got down there on the punt coverage team to down it. Big and Walton. Moment right, big moment right here for Milton. Yeah. Walton, as we, we showed in that resume, a, a team that can put up 50 points a game on anyone. Very explosive down the field with this quarterback and these receivers. So Milton is going to have to play tough right here. You don't want to go down 21 nothing, uh, 21 to 7 at half. Yeah, this is a big possession, especially since Walton will be receiving the opening kickoff in the second half. Heklinski going to air it out. Jump ball and broken up. Redmond back there to deny Sonderman. Ty Redmond, the three star, just a big body to try to throw over. Wyatt Sonderman listed at 6 1. Ty Redmond, 6 2. Getting his head around right there. Great job of that as a corner. Very confident. That shows the confidence in coverage right there when you can get your head around, make yourself a receiver. It makes the job for the referee easier when you turn your head as a corner. Pass goes to Teal on a screen pass. And Teal's going to get the first down as he motors his way up to the 38 yard line. On a teal, one of those hybrid tight end receivers, a guy with great size but also explosive speed. 
Hicklinski, Chase, quarterback sack, back at the 22-yard line. They got him that time. Ja'Cory Stewart haven't called his name yet tonight until this moment. The outside linebacker, Kansas commit, coming off the edge. Big pressure in the middle by Terrence Spencer as well. As you can see him go through that double team, just nowhere for Hecklinski to be able to maneuver and find some space to throw the ball. Ja'Cory Stewart committed to Kansas on June 11th. Twelve other offers, including Georgia Tech and Texas A&M. Consensus three star on second down going to try to run out of this mess and Bottiford who was four for 46 yards rushing on their last touchdown drive gets a few of it back and now it's going to be third down and long that might be the final play of the half. Great job in this drive by the Eagles creating third and long defending the long pass Ty Redmond. Able to hold off and keep this score within one score. Well, there you go. First half in the books. Walton. Milton head to the locker room with the Raiders on top, 14 to 7. Thought it was a good first half, but just a real physical first half as well. Tonight's coach's interview is brought to you by Johnny's New York Style Pizza, your original neighborhood pizzeria. Coach, up by seven, a physical first half, but I know you want to see more from your team. I'm going to keep it simple. What improvements on the offensive side of the ball are you going to make at the half? we got to stop shooting ourselves in the foot. I mean, too many mistakes that we're killing ourselves in. Um, then the, I keep saying this. This offense will only stop itself, you know, and that's we got to clean those things up. But uh, they've done a pretty decent job, but we should have more points on the board right now. Yeah, and defensively speaking, it seemed like it took Milton's offense a little bit of time to kind of settle in. How did you guys take advantage of that? Uh, you know, we did a pretty good job starting off the bat, but, you know, that drive they scored on, we got to get off the bit on third down. Too many third down opportunities that we gave them chances. Um, playing good on defense, but we got to win third down. Coach, one shot. This is it for a first state title. What's going to be the message to your team in there? Just be us. Just be us and have fun the second half. All right, go have fun, Coach. All right, G B fam, we are currently in the middle of halftime of the 7A state title game between Walton and Milton. But don't go anywhere because coming up we have our the final, the final halftime show for our Football Fridays in Georgia halftime show with Hannah and John. So keep it right here on GPB. We'll be right back with some more football and more guests. Stick with us. But only in Cartersville Bartow. Three Smithsonian affiliated museums, Barnsley Resort, in an authentic downtown full of unique restaurants and shops. The perfect destination for a memorable staycation, only in Cartersville, Bartow. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign. Be kind to your mind. Live drug free. DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign is all about Georgians standing together for substance misuse prevention. Be kind to your mind. Live drug free. Learn more about healthy alternatives and living a drug free lifestyle at garedribbon.org. Kennesaw State University. Central Georgia EMC and 33 other participating Georgia Electric Membership Cooperatives congratulate Jackson High School on winning the GHSA Cooperative Spirit Sportsmanship Award. This award honors schools that exhibit exemplary sportsmanship during competitive events. Only one school in each region in each classification is chosen to receive this annual award. The GHSA takes into consideration all aspects of sportsmanship, making the award a tribute to the entire community.
Central Georgia EMC is so proud to present the Cooperative Spirit Sportsmanship Award to the Jackson Red Devils. This award is a testament to the players, the coaches, and the parents and onlookers for every game that they attend. Introduced in 2006, this award reinforces the GHSA's philosophy that everyone associated with high school activities, from athletes to spectators, should adhere to the fundamental values it represents. It's very honorable to be able to do that. Um, just to, you know, things we preach as coaches, you know, of being a good sportsmanship, you know, don't, don't, you know, disrespect the game. And to be able to accept this award on behalf of all athletics just shows a testament to our athletes and the sportsmanship they've shown throughout the years, the different seasons, and, and being able to be a good, good athlete physically and, you know, mentally and emotionally. Georgia EMCs and the 34 participating Georgia Electric Membership Cooperatives are proud to sponsor the Cooperative Spirit Sportsmanship Award. Congratulations to the Jackson High School community. Welcome to the Football Fridays in Georgia Halftime Show presented by Regions. Get back in the game with Regions Bank. That's John Nelson. I'm Hannah Gooden. We are live from Mercedes-Benz Stadium for the final game of the 2023 GHSA Boys and Girls Football Championships. What a week it's been, John. Three days, 11 games, 10 and a half of them are done. We've got another half of football coming up in just a little bit. Let's take a look at what has happened so far in the Milton versus Walton game on Georgia's EMC scoreboard. Georgia's EMC, so much more than electricity. Walton Raiders up 14-7, and we kind of anticipated this was going to be a game that was going to be very, very tight. Thought there was going to be more offensive fireworks. Haven't seen them yet. Do we get the adjustments in the second half? We will find out. For now, we have a very special guest joining us on set from the 1973 Southwest Atlanta High School football <laughs> team. That's Johnny Mason. Johnny, your team was honored before the game. What was that like? How did that feel? And just congratulations. Well, thank you very much. Um, it felt very, very special. Um, you know, it's been, you know, 50 years, of course. Um, most of our guys are still around, but not all of them. But I really appreciate the Georgia High School Association's um, taking the time to honor us. Um, and it's, it's amazing that no other city of Atlanta public high school has won a, um, a state championship since our team 50 wow. years ago. And we're showing a little bit of the presentation the, yeah. down there on the field. A lot of familiar faces. For those who never got to see what kind of a coach Ted Sparks was, how would you describe how he was able to mentor and mold young men 50 years ago? Yeah, Ted was a special coach. He had some great assistant coaches, but we couldn't have done it without our coaches. Ted preached academics first, um, but he worked us hard. I mean, we ran after practice. Uh, we ran during practice, <laughs> uh, but uh, but it paid off. And uh, over the few years that we were under his tutelage, uh, we we knew that it would take hard work to pay off. So he was an excellent coach. Southwest Atlanta celebrating the 50th year of their state championship in football, the first all-black school to win a championship in the GHSA. Thank you so much for being here. What are your Thank final you. thoughts on your experience so far at the Benz? <laughs> oh, well, this this is special. We, we of course, miss uh, Anthony Flanagan, yeah. who was one of our uh, star uh, quarterbacks who was just recently inducted to the Georgia Football Hall of Fame, but we lost Anthony in 2001. But, um, but we, 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 again, we appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, it's just a special moment with the guys that are here, and Anthony's wife is here, Rosalind, as well with us. Well, the pleasure is all ours. Thank no you for coming up here and being on set with us, and just congratulations again. So well deserved. I really honor. appreciate yeah. it. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you, Johnny. Okay, we have to take one quick break, but coming up next, we still have two more special guests for this very special 7A championship halftime show. We'll see you in just a minute. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Georgia's EMCs. So much more than electricity. In lively towns and peaceful rural areas, Georgia's electric membership cooperatives are on a mission to provide a different kind of electricity. Our not-for-profit member-owned EMCs are focused on making life better for members. At private residences, farms, and thriving businesses, we work for you. 
generating safe, reliable, affordable electricity, giving back to local programs, serving our members to make life brighter. Georgia's EMCs, so much more than electricity. The GHSA football playoffs and championships are brought to you by Alpha Insurance. We're more than just an insurance company. We're a part of your community. What you doing? Hey, just finishing this claim to get Dave back on the road. Nice. I wonder what Dave's doing. you covered football fridays in georgia on gpb is brought to you in part by dbhdd win by learning about safe usage of prescription opioids Welcome back to the Regions Halftime Show. If you're just now joining us, we are in the final boys championship game of this three-day GHSA marathon. It's the break of Walton versus Milton. The Raiders are up 14-7. to We have Milton Principal Brian Jones here with us to recap the first half. Even though you're down by a score, thoughts on what has happened so far in the game? Uh, you know... I think it's just very unexpected of the score, right? You have these two high offense scoring teams and it's 14-7. Um, I think the good thing for us is we're, you know, we, we're, we, don't, we don't have issues coming from behind, right? You know, we've uh, been down a couple times at halftime and have come back and, you know, handled third quarter. So, uh, so yeah, I, I like where we are. I know our coaches can make some great adjustments and our kids will adjust and listen to them and, and we'll be good to go. Not the last time that Milton has been in the last game of the year, but what has this year been like getting to the last game of the year? Um, you know, it's been great watching this group of kids start buying into the system and, and then really just believe in what their coaches are doing and then just see the, the support the other students have been giving them. Um, you know, again, we're, we're young. We return either 16 or 18 next year. So this is a group that th this is a great experience because it's going to pay huge dividends moving forward. But um, it's just a great group of kids. They've, they've gelled together. The coaches are, you know, they're bought in with the coaches, and we're, we're looking forward to a second half. Yeah, the Eagles played in it in 2021, won it all in 2018. Aside from football, what else is happening in your school? Brag about everything athletically and in academically that right. you want to. <laughs> uh, our one-act play, we are state champs this past fall. Nice. So very proud of that. Brand new director, Mickey Ann Keel, came in, rocked it, and we won a state championship in 7A for one act. And so it's awesome. And academically, we're, we're a top performing school. So I love where I am. I love the community and this is a great place to be. Very cool. Yep. Brian, yep. thank you so much thank for being guys. here. We will see what happens see ya. in see the ya. second half. Enjoy with your these, Waffle House. These <laughs> offenses. <laughs> he knows what's going on. John's post-game tradition yes, after the championship. Absolutely. OK, time to spotlight a very special person that was the recipient of the You Save It Pharmacy Scholarship last year. He won $5,000. And I will tell you, about where he is at now, but he is a former Rabin County defensive end, that Cesar Cruz. Here was his story from last year. Hi, I'm Tommy Sharp with You Save at Pharmacy, and I'm proud to present to you this week's You Save at Pharmacy Student Athlete of the Week. When you look at a kid that just unbelievable character and where he's come from and what he's done with his life, and it's just an unbelievable story. I want to be known as a person they could talk to, like they could reach out and if you need help, I'll be there. Caesar has a tremendous mom and dad. I want to be like them, and I want to make it out of a tough time working hard. I hope you've enjoyed watching You Save It's Pharmacy Student Athlete of the Week. If you'd like to watch our full interview, please follow this link. So with that scholarship, he is now attending college at the University of North Georgia studying all things video, video production. production. He's he, even been yeah. back to Raven County to do some videos for them. And head coach Michael Davis still brags on him and said he is an outstanding person. He has an outstanding family as well. So we wanted to update everybody on Caesar's success and where that scholarship money went. No doubt about it. Thanks, Heavy D. We have to take a one more quick break. Because we have one more guest. But coming up next is our last guest, mm -hmm. Dr. Robin Hines. Stick with us.
Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Regions Bank. Get back in the game with Regions Bank. At Regions Bank, we're here to listen to your needs and we'll customize a plan to help you reach your financial goals. Our service to Georgia goes beyond banking to creating more inclusive prosperity in our communities. From education to financial wellness to economic development, we're working to level the playing field so more people can succeed and our communities can thrive. While we've got a quick break in the action, did you know that the same area of just one football field can contain up to 95 termite colonies? That's why you need Breda Pest Management to defend your home. Breda, the official pest control of high school football. Seniors, your Georgia match letters have been mailed and the possibilities are endless. Visit your student dashboard on gafutures.org to see which of the 45 colleges and universities made your list and claim your spot today. Oh, could you uh, give, me a, give me a soda there? Sweetheart, please don't forget to wear your seatbelt. I got it, Mom. It's a really nice day living in the right space. Breathing your face, got me feeling so good away. In the blink of an eye, so many tomorrows can disappear. Buckle up for your future, every trip, every time. A message from the Governor's Office of Highway Safety. the break of the final game of the week. It's the 7A matchup between Walton and Milton. The Raiders are up 14 to 7. That's John Nelson. I'm Hannah Gooden. And as always, at the end of the night, we bring in the GHSA Executive Director, <laughs> Dr. Robin Hines. <laughs> Here we are. Here we are. Dr. Hines, how would you sum up these three days? I think it's been great, but first I want to say you guys have done a great job because you've been here just as long as I have, <laughs> and sleep does not even qualify no. as a nap. And first thing this morning, I heard your bright and cheerful voice going. Yeah. I said, I've got to get it going. Thank you, but no, Dr. It's, it's been awesome, and it's gotten smoother as the days have gone by. We've had great football, uh, great support from the Mercedes-Benz and the Falcons people, and, of course, GPB. So thank you all very much. One of the things that uh, happened early in the game downstairs was a great moment for the GHSA officiating and the Blank Foundation. Go into that for those who yes. missed it. Well, I'm just telling you, you know, Mr. Blank and the Blank Foundation has generously offered a $50,000 grant mm -hmm. uh, to the GHSA for the purpose of recru recruiting and retaining officials. Uh, we're really excited about that. It can offset the cost of young officials uh, getting into the game. Nice. You know, our officials are getting older. There's a shortage nationwide. It's certainly here in Georgia. Uh, and we're in better shape than most, but boy, we need it. And, and those guys are stepping up to the, plate, up to the plate, and we can't be more grateful. If anyone out there wants to be official, go apply. GHSA.org. If you net. get in touch with you, I promise you, <laughs> okay. we'll hook you up with your local association. Nice. How much time do you get? 30 seconds. How much time do you give yourselves to rest before you start planning for next year? <laughs> We'll start that first thing in the morning, actually. Uh, you know, Ernie and I will be in the office tomorrow morning while everything is fresh, and we'll make our notes, and 
get that going. I'm talking about Ernie Yarbrough, who handles our most of our major events and does an outstanding job, but it will start in the morning. Looking I know our boss it. man, Kevin Gerke, will also be talking to us about championships probably January 2nd. So. No, tomorrow morning, <laughs> I guarantee you. Oh, well, thank you, Dr. Hines, for everything you do in the GHSA. This has been an outstanding production the last three days. Well, that's great. You guys are awesome, and thank you for all that you do for I, uh, high school sports. Thank Thanks you. Again. And we have some more people we'd like to thank quickly. Let me the get my, entire let me, credit let me roll that you will see at I, the I end know, of the weekend. Yeah, I know I'm missing people Massive off this amounts list. of folks. So here's just a few names of the people that work on our shows. Producer Lori, Director Katina, Christy, Greg, Aisha, Brandon, Justin, Scott, Randall, Reagan, Bree, Jeff Bonk, Everyone in audio that's in the truck. Yes. I don't even know everybody that's two on the ships, shows because 200 the names. truck is so hidden. It's been a fantastic time here for those of us yeah. inside Mercedes-Benz. A lot of hard work by a lot of folks outside Mercedes-Benz for GPB and the GHSA. And lastly, thank you for watching and putting up with John and I all Good. week long. We hope you enjoy the rest of the 7A matchup, and we'll see you next time. Jeremiah's been a good football player for us. He's very intelligent on the football field and he displays leadership. He is always prepared each and every day because of how he handles himself in the film room. I like the hit, you know what I'm saying, the physicality, the mentality you bring to the position. Playing linebacker is like a quarterback for the defense, so that's what I like. Welcome back to the Benz halftime Walton 14 7 lead on Milton and the halftime interview is brought to you by Johnny's New York style pizza your original neighborhood pizzeria we send it back down to Nikki Noto Palmer. All right so an uncharacteristic first half from your team down by seven but you've been here before how do you turn those drives into scores. Yeah I mean it's football 101 it's turnovers it's pad level it's tackling. The bad news is is we just played the worst half of football we played in five weeks. The good news is we just played the worst half of football we played in five weeks and we're down a score. So they're either going to turn it on and go get it or they're not because that's just what's going to come down to this half. We're right there. If we want it, we got to go get it. And it's going to start with defense. So how do you get out there with this first defensive possession and neutralize Hecklinski and company? Yeah, I mean, I just let them know how bad of a half they had. And we're not playing like that hungry defense that has got us this far. And if they want to win a state championship, they better go out and play with a starvation, not a hunger. If I remember correctly, you said you do a pretty good job at ticking your team off for motivation. Uh, and I hope I just did because I gave them all I had. <laughs> all right, Coach, stay title on the line. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Matt Wayne, we've got one half of incredible football coming up. It's going to be physical. It's going to be fun. Thank you very much, Nikki. And it, it's funny, Wayne, I, I thought that both of the coaches were just kind of disappointed with their performances in the first half. I thought it was just a good, clean, old fashioned physical football game in the first half. I think both came in the expectation they was just going to light up the scoreboard and these defenses and both of them have, have had to go to their second game, which is running the ball to make some yards. All right, let's take a look at those first half highlights. There were some mistakes early. Milton made the first one, the pass thrown by Nickel to Wiley, and he coughs it up right there. That's going to turn into points for Wall in a few plays later. Hecklinski gets the ball and quickly moves down the field, getting it to his best friend Hunter Teal in the back of the end zone. 7-0 lead for the Walton Raiders, but here comes the Milton Eagles, and Esley catches. Looked like his knee touched the ground. Replay confirmed the play was upheld. That's 47 yards, and then they give the ball to Lester for the score. The power run game to get on the board to even the score and get him back into the game by T.J. Lester. Walton capped a nice drive right before the end of the first half. 
with the run by Botterford, and that's the scoring right now. 14-7, Walton on top as we take a look at the Breda Pest management halftime stats. What jumps out at you? The rushing yards for Walton, 105, and only 65 passing yards. You come in this game expecting them to light up the scoreboard. They've had to have time of possession almost double there by Walton, 30 plays to 20 over Milton. Been a good, efficient first half of both teams. I agree with you. I think both uh, both offenses have great expectations and their ability to score uh, not taking into account the caliber of defense they've been going against here tonight. And I think that was the overriding impression I got from the first half was the defenses were maybe a little bit better than the offenses thought they were going to be. Yeah, especially on the Milton side with Dylan Lewis and Ty Redman this secondary has just been playing a lot of man and, and blitzing at Jeremy Hecklinski disrupting his timing and on the other side of the ball uh, just been tough sledding trying to run the ball up front. Luke Nickel has had to make a couple of plays running the ball, but this wasn't you shouldn't expect this game to be easy. There's a lot on the line, a lot of familiarity, and it's been a good game even at 14-7. Well, the third quarter kickoff is brought to you by Buckle Up Georgia. Buckle Up Georgia, seat belts save lives, and here we go. Two quarters to decide the 7A state champion in the state of Georgia, and Walton seeking their first ever on top. 14 to 7 as we start the third quarter. The kick gonna sail to the back of the end zone and the Raiders gonna bring it out to the 20 yard line. Of course, Milton is a newbie at that as well. This is the third time they have played in the state championship game and all of those have come now in the last six seasons. Before that, Milton uh, did not have much of a playoff history at all. As Heklinski, you see tonight, just 65 yards passing so far through the first two quarters of the game. What a great job is Milton mixing it up on Jeremy Heklinski, bringing pressure, making him throw a lot of balls that he can't step in through to deliver. Botterford gets the handoff and Lawson hits him in the backfield. Botterford still manages to get a yard on the play. And just a one yard game for the Raiders the first time they touched the ball here in the third quarter. Great downhill linebacking play there by Jack Lawson playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Him and Timmy, uh, Timinia and Benton have been stellar tonight as far as getting downhill to stop the run. Second down and nine. Fumbled. The Eagles are saying they got it. All indications are they do. How about that? Walton gets that kickoff. They deferred to get the kickoff to start the third quarter, and they cough it up. Right here on the handoff, just bobbling the handoff is for jumping on the ball right there is Drew Cohen. Come, finally coming up with it right there, 95. He's fighting there, scratching. He turns over. He has the ball in his hand. And I guess Coach Ben Rees, at least in that first set of downs with his defense, half them ticked off. Drew Cohen comes up with the big play. Here's another look at it. Uh, you know, the handoff just didn't happen. Bodiford fumbled it right away. So first and 10 Eagles at the Walton 20-yard line. Ball goes out to Gatling. Gatling ankle tackle by Bride at the 10 yard line, but that'll be a first down and first and goal now for the Eagles. Long throw there, great delivery out to Gatling on that route. Great time to get him open down around the goal line with his size at 6'2, 190. Gatling up to 77 catches this year. Coming into the game nearly 900 yards has had a fabulous career. First and goal ball goes back to Gatling Gatling gets thrown out of bounds by Bride at the six yard line. They looked like the officials wanted to grab for the flag but they were strained and did not throw it. Luke Nickel going this way to Gatling the whole time right there looking him down right here at the end a little shove very close there by Bam Bride very Close right there. Officials just letting them play. Let's put it that way on that play. 
Second down and goal. From the five, nickel spin move in trouble. Quarterback sack as Jake Thorner got him back at the 17 yard line. Looks like they were trying to set up a screen to the boundary here, just getting a little confused. As you can see with the pressure there of Jake Thorner, by the time Luke Nickel turns around, 17 is right in his face for the sack. That is a huge sack by Jake Thorner. Might push him into field goal attempt here rather than a touchdown. Thorner this season, spectacular numbers as a junior, 129 total tackles. He'll be the man in that linebacking core next year. Delay a game, offense, five yard penalty, still third down. So now you've pushed the ball out to the 20. What strategy do you take right here? Because the chances of scoring the touchdown are diminishing with each large yard that you lose. Do you try to cut it in half, get it back, and settle for the field goal? What do you do? Find something underneath, as you say, get about half of it back to, to get a feeling of where you might on that fourth down go, but definitely to make it an easier field goal try. Chased. Ball is going to be short. Great pressure. Walton really brought the pressure. If they got that ball down to the five yard line, they unleashed the dogs on him. And Wendell Gregory forced him into a bad pass. Only a three man rush right there. Look at that pass rush there by Wendell Gregory on Raleigh, rushing off the edge. Just one of those guys with a knack. That tweener with that tweener size at 6'4", 225, can come off the edge, run you down with the speed. 37-yard attempt by Alex Nover, and he missed it. But there was a whistle before the kick. There are 11 people. I think they maybe thought it was There's 12 no people. There's no foul on the play. Fourth down. They did a count and thought it was 12 people, and I think that's just because Daniel Calhoun is out there. So they thought maybe <laughs> he was he counted as two, two, but it's just one person. <laughs> the big fella right there. Well, Milton catches a heck of a break because Nover missed that kick. A 37-yarder. He's a really good kicker and very reliable from this range. So he gets another try at it. Dylan Warren, the backup quarterback, is the holder. Kick is on its way, and this one's going to be good. <laughs> so the inadvertent flag dropped by the officials actually helps out Milton. Daniel Bruner <laughs> didn't like the fact that Milton got helped out on that right there. And it's 14 to 10 on the field goal by Nover. Rightfully so. The coaches over there want an explanation on why you thought there was 12 people in the count to late sub in, in, in that formation for them is, is why they may have thought yeah. the count was off. Yeah, Sonderman came running on the field late, and so the officials, I guess, naturally assumed that he was coming on late, and then now we've got an extra player on, so that would make 12. And then when they counted, they found out, no, they actually had 10 on the field, and he was the 11th guy getting out there, and not the, not the 12th guy getting out there, and they already had 11. So that ended up helping out Milton, and it's 14 to 10. Nover with the kickoff, another great kick, and this is going to be non-returnable. So let's go back. We've got the video of what happened here right before the first field goal attempt by Nover. And you will see Sonderman come running on right here. And so the officials, I think, and oh my gosh, they've got 12 on the field when in reality they only had 10 on the field to begin with. Especially since he didn't see anybody run off at the same time right. that Sonderman ran on for Walter. So. Milton ended up getting zero yards after that fumble recovery. They actually got it down to the five and then lost 15 of it back. So it's 14 to 10 now as Walton back on offense from the 20 yard line and Bodiford getting the carry. 
And you see a conscious effort by this defense of Milton playing the run. As Coach talked about the one thing he was disappointed was the attitude of his defense. Letting Walton be able to run that ball for over 100 yards as a team in the first half. They're making a concerted effort to get in the box and play physical with this offensive line. Second down and nine. Heklinski going to go back the other way and nearly intercepted and popped into the hands of Teal. Caleb Bell is holding his helmet. He had a pick six in his hands if he'd only been able to hold on to the ball. Trying to set up the screen back to Teal. Caleb Bell getting in the pass lane, coming free. He sees the play, goes up for the interception. Ball goes right between his hands and into the hand of Hunter Teal. Teal ends up getting five yards on the play. Now Botterford, and he's going to get the first down. Tackle by Benton coming in there. Lawson as well, but Botterford just too strong to be denied, and it's going to be first and ten. Tough to tackle that young man with his size at 205 and the, and the way he runs low to the ground. Great balance by Botterford on that play. I mean, look at these yards per rush numbers here. Walton's okay at five. Milton 2.0, and, and that's not all that surprising. Milton does not have a strong running game. They only average about 100 yards rushing a game. Heklinski on the spin move. Flag out, going to have a hold as he slings it to the far sideline. It's caught by Botterford. None of that's going to matter in all likelihood. Caleb Bell there with the pressure. Right up the middle of this offensive line. Holding. Offense. 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. See, working over the left guard, Justin Kruger, right there. Getting him off balance with that shake. And then Poole rushing him. Kruger having no chance, just trying to hold and keep his quarterback clean on that play. There's the great morning coach. Daniel Bruner says everywhere he goes around town he was at Waffle House in between the semifinals and the state championship and the uh, the waitress the waiter uh, said you're the great morning coach Archie he's known <laughs> around school as always being very positive and great morning. He's got a lot of energy I'll tell you that. Heklinski on the spin move again gets to the sideline downfield intercepted if he stuck the landing Lawson comes up with it did he stick the landing though the officials say he did and this will go under review the ruling on the field is an interception first down Milton what great play pressure up the middle by Terrence Spencer and Caleb Bale just trying to drop it in the bucket there Tiptoe in by Jake Lawson right there. Beautiful interception by the senior linebacker. Looking like a receiver right here. Well, Lawson has played some wide receiver in his career, and you can see those ball school, ball skills, pardon me, coming into play right there on that interception. So that's a second turnover for the Raiders here in this third quarter. And that's just the fourth interception that Heklinski has thrown this season. <laughs> that's the run by Lester. If I'm not mistaken, we have televised all four of his interceptions. I think so. I think North, North Paulding game, <laughs> and then two against Camden County, and then one here tonight. So it's us, is what you're saying. It, it might be us. It could be. I mean, there's a, a lot of evidence mounting against us. Hey, it's on us. We got to stop. Second down and four. Uh, second down and nine from the 43 yard line. Nickel right there. Esley down to the 28 yard line. Let's check in with Nikki Noto Palmer. Matt Wayne, I'm pretty sure every Eagle just came over and hugged Jack Lawson, slapped him in all the good ways, of course. And then they were kind of making fun of his little ballerina move, you know, with a little two tap. Uh, they like that. So they're fired up. That's exactly what Milton needed. And that's exactly what Coach Reeves told me at the halftime. He said they're going to be motivated to get back out there. Well, that interception has given Milton the chance to take the lead here on this possession. Ball goes to Esley again. He's been 
Nichols' favorite target tonight. That's going to be the fifth ball catch for Esley and close to 80 yards receiving. C.J. Wiley right there with the big catch. Yeah, that was Wiley. Pardon me. For Milton, two plays in a row. Luke Nichol has decided to go to Wiley right there. Pressure once again coming by Walton. Great job by the big fella, 6'4", 195, junior. Who's had an outstanding year, the four star. Ball goes to Gatling now. Gatling cut move and all the way down to the eight yard line. So back to back to Wiley and now Gatling getting his big gun wide receivers involved. And you can see Luke Nickel and this offense like to get the ball out wide to the talent of DeBron Gatlin in the red zone. The ability to run through tackles and make people miss by DeBron Gatlin. First and goal from the eight yard line. Ball in the air. Esley with the touchdown. Milton on top for the first time tonight. Mark Esley working out of the slot, running a corner route to the back of the end zone, getting lost in the shuffle there as CJ Wiley is coming underneath. Esley runs. A corner out to the back of the end zone. Great find. Dropping in the bucket right there by Luke Nickel. Mark Esley with his fifth catch of the game. And Nova on for the PAT. Line drives it through. 17-14. Milton in the lead. Walton's been their own worst enemy in this quarter. Turnovers have led to 10 Milton points and an Eagles lead. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Cigna Healthcare. Cigna Healthcare is a proud partner of Georgia Public Broadcasting and Football Fridays. Cigna Healthcare's mission is to improve the health and vitality of those we serve. Visit Cigna.com to learn how you can support your physical and emotional well-being. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Georgia's EMCs. So much more than electricity. Today's conservation-minded consumer cares about where their energy comes from. Your local EMC cares, too. Georgia's electric membership cooperatives offer renewable options for our members. In fact, our solar portfolio will produce enough clean energy to power more than 180,000 households. Striving to move the needle toward progress and position communities for the future. Georgia's EMCs, so much more than electricity. While we've got a quick break in the action, did you know that the same area of just one football field can contain up to 95 termite colonies? That's why you need Breda Pest Management to defend your home. Breda, the official pest control of high school football. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Regions Bank. Get back in the game with Regions Bank. 21 remaining in the third quarter of the 7A state championship game. Milton now on top of Walton. 17-14. Matt Stewart along with Wayne Gandy, Nikki Noto Palmer. And it'll be interesting to see how Walton responds in a tight game. They've had only one game the entire season that was decided by a touchdown or less. And that was their 35-27 victory over North Cobb. They've won on average by five touchdowns a game. With the turnovers, all the energy has gone to Milton. And they are playing at that next level that their coach was pulling out of them at halftime and now can Walton get in some kind of groove the turnovers really has been their Achilles heel in this second half no doubt about it two of them a fumble and an interception leading directly to 10 points for Milton erasing a 14 7 halftime deficit and turning it into a 17 14 third quarter lead Sonderman on the return and Sonderman gets thrown to the ground gets it out to the 27 that's where the Raiders will go back on offense and really after seeing Walton so much this year and years prior it's it's hard to fathom that they have 180 yards of total offense in this game just not able to get the ball down the field these cornerbacks give them credit Makai Jones Tristan Lester at the safety this linebacking core playing great out in space in coverage. 
Austin Williams. He's going to pick up four on the play up to the 31. Now, the last time we saw Walton in the semifinals and their victory over Camden County, I thought it was this young man right here, Austin Williams, that was a real spark plug for them when they were in a battle with Camden County. His ability to get out in space and make people miss, but this Milton defense is really taking that challenge of stopping the run, getting off blocks. Ball goes to Hunter Teal, not going to get the first down, though. Great double coverage out there, and Lawson making another huge play. Lawson, Ty Redmond out on the edge. Big hit right there by Redmond. Having him a, a, a heck of a game is Redmond. Jack Lawson is just all over the field right now. Third down and two. You can see these corners. Dylan Lewis, Ty Redmond up on the line. They're challenging these receivers. But Lord and, and Wyatt Sunderman from the jump playing bump coverage. Heklinski spins away from Lawson. Downfield it goes, and Sunderman looks for a flag and doesn't get it. There was a flag. Now it does come out. It's sitting there at the 43. We got two flags on the play here. One. Yeah, so we got two different fouls coming up here. Yes. So they've got two to sort out. One most certainly is probably DPI. That's on the far side of the field. We'll check to see what the flag on the near side of the field is going to be. I think you're going to have an illegal shift here on Walton. Illegal man downfield. So we're going to have offsetting penalties. There are fouls on both teams. Pass interference, defense, illegal man downfield, offense. Those penalties would offset, replay third down. It was a long developing play, and anytime you get a scramble situation with your quarterback, you have the risk of the offensive lineman releasing and getting downfield. And apparently that must have been what happened. Bodiford on the run to the far side. He's got the first down and more. And Bodiford's up to the 47. Great job on that left side, Calhoun and Kruger. Just knocking everything down. Jack Lawson trying to go underneath Daniel Calhoun. Macari Bodiford reading his keys, getting to the outside. Watch out. Lawson goes underneath Calhoun. To many, it can't get back to the outside. Nice read there by Bodiford for that first down. This time they go to Austin Williams after Bodiford had run for 13. And Austin Williams picks up five across the 50 down to the other 48. We talked about this Milton defense, one of their big keys defensively. Just try to confuse, excuse me, to eliminate the big play of Walton. They've done that so far. Making them have to go and, and be patient, running the ball and throwing short. Second down and five. The tight ends, Teal and Cascone, flip from the right to the left, and they're going to run to the right. Oh, my goodness, big hit. But a first down run. Austin Williams got rocked as he was making a cut back in the hole, but he holds on to the ball and gets the Raiders a first down. Good block and nice kick out blocked by the right guard. Big hit there at the end. Tamenia has Tamenia. been burying people tonight. <laughs> Eight yard pickup. Tamenia, we were talking about uh, Ashton Woods for Walton, a guy, the fifth guy in his family to come through the program. Well, Tamenia, same kind of story. Caleb Ellis chasing down Hecklinski in the open field. Nice job of Heklinski improvising. Just nothing downfield to throw to. Pressure finally got there. He got out of the pocket and picked up a couple of yards. We're down to two minutes to play here in the third quarter. It's really been a fast game. 
We started an hour later than scheduled because of the games ahead of us, and this game's moved really quick. Austin Williams, a Botifer, pardon me, and there's a flag out, so forget it probably. As Botifer gets another big gain right there, Walton's starting to get that ground game cranked up, but it's coming back in all likelihood. We're gonna get, you're going to get a hold here on 77, Calhoun. Right Holy there. Offense. On Jake and Lawson. No penalty. We play second down. As you can see, Lawson gets turned around right there by Calhoun, is where you saw that holding. Erases a 32 yard run. Right here off your left side, number seven right there, both hands outside. Right there, he tries to turn him. That's something, as you talked about, Matt, he'll start practice up there in Georgia with Stacey Searles as an O lineman. That's a no no. You got to run your feet. You cannot try to turn the defender like that. Searles, Kirby Smart, they were all here in the building earlier in the day. They may still be here. I know they were here for the earlier championship games. But Daniel Calhoun is a massive man. A uh, uh, huge and uh, a great prospect, great height, size, agility. Second and 18 for Hecklinski. Trying to get the ball right there to Cameron Lloyd. And once again, Jeremy Heklinski just not able to, to deliver the ball. Not He's falling back, trying to throw the ball right there. Lloyd had his man beat working out of the slot. He has to be able to set his feet. I know he feels a little of the pressure. Set his feet and step into that throw and deliver it to Lloyd. Going to bring up third down and 18. goes to Brian and he holds on to it and going to be short of the original line of scrimmage there at the 41 yard line and now it's going to be fourth down and 11. What do you do here? We're down to the final 13 minutes of this game. Do you punt play defense field possession game field position game or do you go for it on fourth and 11? Fourth and 11 right here. I would punt the ball. I know you have very a lot of confidence in your quarterback and your receivers right here. I would try to pin them deep and trust my defense to get me the ball back. Don't be surprised if that Linsky pooch kick is not going to throw it and intercepted at the 29 yard line by Redmond. Redmond's got a chance to go. Heklinski to beat. Heklinski gets him on the ground but Redmond inside the 15 yard line. Ty Redmond, the three-star junior. We talked about him and his running mate, Dylan Lewis, and their ability to play bump and run and be able to cover this, this explosive receiving core here, running step for step with Wyatt Sonderman. Sees the route, jumps it like a receiver. And then off to the races, trying to get to the end zone right there. Looks like maybe at the end, you could see his knee right there in that left leg. But watch the coverage right here. Not afraid of what a Sunderman speed undercut jumps the route. And then trying to get a score for his team right here. As you can see, he lands on that left leg as he is trying to catch his balance. Hopefully he can get up, but he's had a top notch game. We, we knew it was going to be a yeah. challenge for Walton to throw against these two corners. Milton has an outstanding secondary as you mentioned two junior corners both of them committed to the Tennessee Volunteers the story there is Ben Reeves when he worked at the University of Georgia coming up uh, made great friendships and relationships with then defensive coordinator Willie Martinez who's now the secondary coach at Tennessee so those bonds oftentimes lead to recruiting and commitments first and goal ball is at the 10 yard line They're going to spot it back at the 12. So again, that's replay review at work. Ball thrown out of bounds. 
Nickel got great pressure right away. Wendell Gregory was not fooled. Everybody else might have been fooled, but Wendell Gregory knew where the ball was. And a great read here by Nickel, just not able to get the ball out to Esley. The pressure and the size of Gregory. You could see Nickel hitting himself on the check. That's my bad. He made the right read, pulled the ball. He had Esley on that RPO out on the edge, just didn't get it to him. Second down and 10. Nickel goes to Gatling. Gatling carries three men past the yard to gain. First and goal to go for the Eagles. Once again in the red zone, a concerted effort to get the ball to DePron. Gatling out on the edge, just trusting he's going to make the play, just coming underneath, get in the ball, and let him go to work. The best athlete on your team with the ball in your hand inside the five. What can go wrong? And that is the end of the third That's quarter. The end of the third quarter. Wow. We played 36 minutes and we'll start the final 12 with Milton first and goal to go. Or Max, actually, it's going to be third and one. They didn't get the first down. Either way, Milton knocking on the door again as we head to the fourth. The GHSA football playoffs and championships are brought to you by Alpha Insurance. We're more than just an insurance company. We're a part of your community. What you doing? Hey, just finishing this claim to get Dave back on the road. Nice. I wonder what Dave's doing. you covered. Half of the nation's opioid overdoses happen right at home because people don't understand the dangers of taking an Oxy or Perk with a glass of alcohol for stress or to sleep. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. Over here. All right, guys, so I know earlier I talked about the mental capacity of Walton's quarterback, Jeremy Heklinski. Well, of course, we're going to ask Coach Reeves, how do you slow that kid down? Well, this is what he said. If we can get him questioning himself, already so much added pressure in this game. This is their year. The group of seniors, this is it for them, their chance to win. He said they can't lose a game. Hopefully that's going to be in the back of his head. And it looks like Milton has found out a way how to rattle the Walton quarterback. Look at the second half numbers, Wayne. 15 plays, 32 yards, and three turnovers for Walton. Haven't seen a performance like this from Walton in a long time, but the Milton defense got to get a lot of credit. Third and one as we start the fourth quarter. Lester gets the first down. And they'll have a fresh four downs to work with from the one-yard line. Walton got some penetration on that run right there. Just could not get into the wheelhouse of Lester before he picked up that first down. But you can see Wendell Gregory coming underneath right there. Just couldn't get enough on him to stop him from that getting that first down. And that was Thorner who stopped him from getting in the end zone along with Ashton Woods. First and goal to go for the Eagles. Play gets blown dead. Did we have a timeout called? Timeout, Milton. The first timeout of the half. So Milton burns a timeout here, and we'll step aside with them as they talk things over with the ball sitting on the one yard line. Cigna Healthcare is a proud partner of Georgia Public Broadcasting and Football Fridays. Cigna Healthcare's mission is to improve the health and vitality of those we serve. Visit Cigna.com to learn how you can support your physical and emotional well-being. 
Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by DBHDD. Win by learning about safe usage of prescription opioids. Half of the nation's opioid overdoses happen right at home because people don't understand the dangers of taking an Oxy or Perk with a glass of alcohol for stress or to sleep. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Regions Bank. Get back in the game with Regions Bank. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Georgia's EMCs. So much more than electricity. 11.25 left in regulation. Milton on top, 17.14, and it's going to be first and goal to go for the Eagles coming out of the timeout. What do they do here? Situation right there. I would trust Luke Nickel running this ball, getting behind that left side and following the full back into the end zone. That's exactly what he's going to do, and he leans that body out. Did he fumble? Did not get in, apparently. He stopped short of the goal line. Well, now comes the touchdown call. This won't be popular with the Walton fans. Right here, just get downhill, get behind your pass with your size, and let's see. Nichols fighting for it. Yeah, the ball right comes there, out right there. Breaks the line. Milton does recover the ball in the end zone. Either way, it's a, it's a touchdown in this case. Yeah, Garrett Heineke, the left guard, ended up hopping on top of the ball. So whether they give the touchdown to Nickel or Heineke, we'll wait and see. But it's a touchdown nonetheless, and Milton has a 23-14 lead. The previous play in the ruling of a touchdown is under video review. Well, I, to me, I don't have a question. We'll bring Dave in, but I, I don't have a question as to whether it's a touchdown. It clearly looked like it broke the plane before the ball was out, at least in my mind. Answer it. There we go. Again, the default uh, rule on the field is, uh, is correct, right? And then we need the uh, indisputable video evidence to overturn something there. So like you described, Matt, uh, I see what you described. Uh, either he broke the plane or the big guy fell on it also. It is a touchdown. Yeah. Either way. But I, I, so it's, it's just a matter who gets credit for the touchdown. Right. But I thought you know, the ball comes out. But remember, folks, the ball doesn't have to get all the way over. The, it just has to break the plane. Just the tip, the tip of the ball hit that imaginary plane that goes up into space for eternity. As long as it crosses that, it's a touchdown. That's very, that's very correct, Matt. Nover the kick up and good and it's a two score lead now for the Milton Eagles 24 14 the heat has been turned up Wayne on this Walton Raiders team like never before this season and it all started on the defensive side of the ball in this half this defense of Milton has been getting after Walton forcing turnovers has been key and then the offense responding to those turnovers and turning them into points. That is what Coach Reeves talked about. He went into halftime to fire up his team, and they have been playing at a different level here in the second half. Yes, 17 second half points for the Eagles, and all of them have come as the result of a Walton turnover. The fumble led to the field goal. The loss in interception led to a touchdown. The Redmond interception and 59 yard return led to the touchdown by Nickel or the offensive lineman. I think they're going to give it to Nickel. They do give the touchdown to Nickel officially, the quarterback, and it's 24 14. And you know, number 62, Garrett Heineke is good. To his 
to his grave he's going to say I scored a touchdown <laughs> <laughs> an offensive lineman doesn't get an opportunity like that every day right very very rare in your whole career trust me I played a whole career and, and never scored a touchdown look at Hecklinski's second half numbers three of six 17 yards and two interceptions and the one thing about this Eagles defense has just impressed me is these two corners yeah. and the way they're playing. They're at the line of scrimmage. They're challenging, and that seems to have been something maybe Jeremy Hecklinski hasn't consistently seen this year where corners are okay challenging his talented receivers at the line. And that's why we talked about those guys in the opening of the show because we felt that was a place that could be a difference maker for Milton in this game. Bodiford runs it up there and picks up about six yards on the play. Now, I think Walton still can be very effective with the running game if they'll just stick with it. They've had success running Bodiford and Austin Williams, and there's still plenty of time to get right back in the game doing just that. Plenty of time to consistently run the ball, especially with the, the big playability with Bodiford and Williams and the speed that they have. Yeah, Walton's rushed for 141 yards in the game, and another sack! Caleb Bell gets in there. That's the third sack of Heklinski tonight. It looked like he took another shot to the head. Big time pressure right there. Caleb Bell working up underneath Daniel Calhoun and just keeps working, as you can see, coming on that stunt right there underneath, getting off the block of Bodiford as well and putting a big shot there on Jeremy Heklinski. Third down. Heklinski airing it out and trying to get it to Lloyd and Redmond had him blanketed. Just running step for step that and that's Sequoia right there. Oh yeah, that's Sequoia. A Sequoia. The senior, maybe the fastest guy on this Milton team running step for step with Cameron Lloyd. Great coverage. Good protection. Trying to air it up down the field. So Coria right there just not giving any room. Hard catch right there on Cameron Lloyd. Punning situation. O'Brien out there to kick for Walton. Line drive kick. Bounces in front of the 50 and then hops over it. Another six yards downfield. And so that is where Milton goes on offense. A 47-yard kick. And now Milton gets into their version of the four minute offense right and, and Matt we, we came in this game with all the expectations of how these two quarterbacks and these talented receiving core was going to dominate the game and it's just been about this secondary and the defensive pressure of Milton that has just really swung this game in Milton's way. First and ten in a lot of ways very reminiscent of when they won their first state championship and beat Colquitt County in 2018 14 to 13. Nickel quick ball goes to Esley and Esley is going to find a place to get down. Esley working out of the slot right there once again. It's a nice throw and catch. Long extension pass right there to Esley. He's kind of the, the, the spark offensively yeah. tonight that they have consistently used. Yeah, he's been their biggest offensive weapon tonight. Maybe the littlest guy on the field. Six catches, now seven catches for close to 70 yards. Ball goes to Wiley. Wiley takes a shot in the back of his calf. Bam Bride making the tackle. Wiley is just going to be such a huge prospect next year as a senior, already a four star, rated as high as the number 32 wide receiver in the country. CJ Wiley, 22 offers, including Georgia, Michigan, and Florida State. First and 10, ball at the 43 yard line. Ball intercepted, and Bam Bride got him one. Maybe that's the spark that the Raiders need. Luke Nickel making a quick read right here. 
neither Ryan G or CJ Wiley as you can see are expecting this ball to come out to them Wiley hadn't even got out of his router turned his head around and nice grab nice interception ball right to Bam Bride. I've liked Bam Bride all season long. You look at the numbers, 44 tackles, 12 PBU, five interceptions coming into the game. A Navy commit plays the game with some swagger. First and 10 ball at the 34. Let's see if the Raiders can get going here on offense. And Bodifer follows the blocks. Bodifer. Rumbles out there, gets 11 yards, ran behind Justin Kruger to pick up the first down. Plenty of time for Walton to stay patient here. Big bodies, a lot of bodies just wadded up together. Body for keeping that leg drive going, running out of that tackle of Tamenia to pick up that first down. Yeah, I'd like to see what would happen if they'd go up tempo here with the running game. Just run it, run it, run like this. Austin Williams, get right back up there and run it again. Speed up the tempo a little bit. Go Bodiford, go Austin Williams and see what happens. And it might open up the passing game for him. This defensive front of Milton has been tough in this second half, filling the gaps, linebackers playing downhill. Just nowhere to throw the ball deep. Going to have to be patient and take what the defense gives. They give it to Botterford again, and I think this is their bread and butter tonight. I think this is where they can come back and win this game. They go three straight runs, and look how quickly they've moved the ball across midfield. You're only down 10 points. You have plenty of time to situate yourself, settle down. Jeremy Hecklinski cut down on the turnovers. And Roger Horse, who seems to be in a groove, and Makari Botterford. Bodiford easily the biggest offensive star for the Raiders tonight 131 yards rushing clock approaching seven and a half left in regulation now Heklinski wants to throw it air it out and it's caught by Cameron Lloyd for a touchdown What a big senior season this young man has put together, getting behind the defense, getting a step on Vassal Sequoia, deep route across the field, great protection by the O-line, airing it out, leading your receiver, throwing it into double coverage there, Jones and Sequoia on the back end, and Cameron Lloyd coming up with the touchdown. And the PAT up and good, it's 24-21. Buckle up, Georgia, like I told you off the top. We got a great 7A state championship game here tonight. Great job here, working out of the slot, just using speed here. And here, getting his head around, outrunning Sequoia. Beautiful catch between two receivers right there. Makai Jones in, the, in good position in front of Lloyd. And Lloyd just coming up with a big catch. The governor's red ribbon campaign scoring drive four plays 66 yards and took him all of 78 seconds and I think it was set up they went three straight runs they went Bodiford they went Austin Williams they went Bodiford all three successful runs and then they drop back and drop a bomb on them play action fake get the safeties to bite up on the run and then try them on the back end just a great route there by that young man Lloyd. Benai set to kick off. Sends it towards the end zone, and it's going to be fielded by Esley over there in the corner. And Esley battles to get to the 20-yard line. Got a great heavyweight fight going on here in the state's largest classification. It's been fun to watch. Nickel has completed the ball to six different receivers. But it's funny, you and I both anticipating the great Heklinski and Nickel matchup. It's been the defenses that really have headlined the show for both teams. Both defenses being able to get to these quarterback, make them make bad decisions and throw, have turnovers. Now can 
Luke Nichols settle down this offense in these situations the times we've seen him this year. This is when he started trying to run the ball a little more and play more of a fullback role on quarterback draws. Empty set for Nickel. Heavy rush eludes it. Slides down takes a two yard loss. Great pursuit there by the nose tackle Hayden Hall pass. Only a three man rush. Just nowhere you, you go way forcing him out of the pocket nowhere to go with the ball and just rallying there Ashton Woods and Hall pass the nose tackle. Second down and 12. Clock goes under seven in regulation. Amari Anderson nowhere to go first time he's carried the ball tonight. Wendell Gregory working underneath the block there Ryan G. Big number one having an impact for this defense working down the line of scrimmage. Third down and ten. Milton three of six on third downs. Good enough to get the first down I think and that's Gatling who went there settled down in the hole beyond the sticks. They move the sticks and that's that's what you think about when you think about this kind of player Gatling your veteran knowing what a sticks is settle down in the zone right there and just make the play. Nice job right there of knowing having awareness by Gatling of where the sticks are to get that first down for your quarterback in your offense. Seventh catch of the night for DeBron Gatling. Five and a half approaching. And Lester gets eight solid. Great job, Lester, reading, being patient, getting back to that backside cut lane. Falling forward. Nothing wrong if you're Milton of just milking this clock. You're up 24 21. Nothing says you need another score. Keep the ball moving, keep the chains moving, creating first downs. Under five minutes in regulation. Can Walton get a stop? Lester gets it again. And Lester, did he get the first down? They spot him at the 41. He got it. Very close of taking himself away from that first down is TJ Lester. Once again, making a nice read, getting up field here. As you can see good vision getting up in the hole right here as he tries to get out of that tackle, kind of taking himself away from the first down. But the ref granted him forward progress on that. Under four and a half, Walton has all three timeouts remaining. Amari Anderson struggling forward. Big, strong four and a half, five yard run by Amari Anderson, who has seven offers. They call him Juice. Miami, Arkansas, Ole Miss among the programs that have offered the junior running back. Nice job of covering that ball up by Anderson. Him and Lester, you're going to run between the tackles. There's going to be some run blitzes. Ball security is a must for Milton in this kind of four minute offense mentality. Bleeding the clock. Drive started at the 722 mark, so it's approaching four minutes long. Ball goes out to Payne. Payne dives forward. Let's see where they spot. Going to be short of the first down, I think, but not by much. Nice read. Good job by Nickel getting the ball out, throwing it where Payne can get to work quickly. Good pass that he can step into. He's just fighting for the yards right there. DeBron Gatlin out there blocking out on the edge for his man. His Receiver mate Tristan Payne. This is third down and two. This is huge. 
If Milton converts here, Walton will have start will have to start using their timeouts on defense. Lester got it and more. TJ Lester stumbled a little bit across the 30. Lester all the way down to the 19 yard line. TJ Lester. His father, Tim Lester, would be proud of his son right here, running behind his pads, running over people, getting out of open space, almost fumbled with his feet and fell down. And nice job of just finishing off the run. T.J. Lester battled injuries all season long. Not the year he completely wanted, but having an impact here in trying to get his team a championship. 32 yard gain all the way down to the 19. Now Walton gra gasping for air. Anderson on the run. Anderson all the way down to the 12. And Walton getting close to having to use timeouts here. Mari Juice Anderson. And these runs are right up the middle. Behind this offensive line, Moan, Scott, Cass, Mark, Heineke rushing, big bodies just pushing the line of scrimmage. No penetration by the defensive front in this drive. This drive is now five plus minutes. They bled it all the way down to 215. Now below that, Anderson up the middle got hit by Thorner to keep him from getting in the end zone. But that's going to be a first down and now it's first and goal to go. Big time block and look at right here that double team. Wendell Gregory trying to work down but big hole in there not having the break stride is Anderson as he hits the line of scrimmage. Now Walton's in a tough spot right here because they penetrated all the way to the seven yard line not knowing when to use those timeouts because if Milton scores here they got to save those timeouts for the next possession if there is another possession. Right up the middle Anderson down to the two and Walton finally burns a timeout. They had no choice right there. Timeout. Walton. Power running right up the middle of this defense, just wearing them out in that guard and center area. And we will step aside with one minute and 34 seconds remaining in the 7A final. Milton looking for their second straight state championship. Cigna Healthcare is a proud partner of Georgia Public Broadcasting and Football Fridays. Cigna Healthcare's mission is to improve the health and vitality of those we serve. Visit Cigna.com to learn how you can support your physical and emotional well-being. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign. Be kind to your mind. Live drug-free. DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign is all about Georgians standing together for substance misuse prevention. Be kind to your mind. Live drug-free. Learn more about healthy alternatives and living a drug-free lifestyle at garedribbon.org. At Regions Bank, we're here to listen to your needs and we'll customize a plan to help you reach your financial goals. Our service to Georgia goes beyond banking to creating more inclusive prosperity in our communities. From education to financial wellness to economic development, we're working to level the playing field so more people can succeed and our communities can thrive. Our number one priority is protecting our players. That's why we're writing new rules for the sport and developing innovative educational tools that protect our athletes. This is player protection. This is high school football. Come over here. One thirty-four to go. Milton going for their second state championship, their first since 2018. And the four turnovers here by Walton have been critical and stopped their offense. Remember, Daniel Bruner told us, told Nikki Noto Palmer, the only body, the only team that can stop our offense are ourselves. And they've done that here in the second half. Their biggest key was to protect the football, something that they have been able to do all season long. Not throwing interceptions, not fumbling the ball, and that has been what has killed them tonight, those turnovers. 
And that was the one turnover that Walton had. So that's the total of four turnovers in the second half. So here we go. Second down and goal. Power to the right. That's where Nickel runs. Nickel didn't get in. We're going to have an illegal shift on Milton. That's going to back him back behind the five. C.J. Wiley is in the end zone with his helmet off. I don't know. Him and Bam Bride were pushing and shoving at the end of that play. He's going to have to come out for a play. So the clock is at 131. What was that? Illegal motion, offense. That penalty is refused. Results of the play will be third down. So third down and goal from the one. And I think you, you refuse that so you don't burn clock. Right. You, you don't want to give another down. down yeah. And, yeah. And you don't get Walton it on this. Walton has elected to start the clock on the snap. Third down. You don't get it on that second down, and I got to call a timeout. Yeah. No. And, and I don't want to do that. So they're counting on a goal line stand right here. Daniel Bruner is standing at the 20 yard line. He wants an explanation on something from the referee. But Walton's chances hinge on their defense getting a goal line stand here. And their favorite play in this situation is quarterback draw with Luke Illegal Nichols. motion on the offense. That penalty is accepted. Five yard penalty. Replay second down. Oh, changed his mind. Walton has elected to start this clock on the snap. And if you're Ben Reeves and this Milton offense, you run the ball here. You, yes. You, you make sure that regardless of how the outcome of the play that you put Walton in a situation, they have to burn a timeout to stop this clock. Well, Walton does have two timeouts remaining. And this is four down territory. I don't think under any circumstance Milton tries a field goal here. Handoff goes to Lester, tries to get outside and not going to get there. Ethan Stannard comes up and makes the tackle. Walton calls timeout. Well, the best Their of both worlds down. right there, Wayne, for the Walton defense. They get a four-yard, five-yard loss and the quick timeout. And great job right there. T.J. Lester, you got to put your foot in the ground and go upfield and get minute, whatever you can seconds. right there. You, you can't try to cut this to the outside. Just not a good decision by that young man who's made a lot of great decisions here tonight. But right there in that situation, it's one cut, it's downhill, and take whatever you can get. So third down and goal from the 11. They put the clock at 123. So Walton needs to get two more stops this third down and then the fourth down because I'm pretty sure Milton's not going to risk a field goal and a block field goal and certainly a field goal doesn't give them anything anyway it just gives them a six point lead which takes the field goal out of the equation it's not nothing but you give the ball back to Walton and Walton's going to score a touchdown if they can so and then, and then that's I, I, I don't I don't think that the field goal means that much to them and in that scenario what you want to do is run the ball yeah. here Run the quarterback draw with Luke Nickel. Once again, making sure that Walton is put in a situation that if they get the ball back, they have no timeouts to operate. Third down and goal from the 11. Nickel goes to the air. One on one matchup. Gatling, did he come down with it? No, the ball was on the ground. Incomplete.
We got a Walton player who's hurt over there in the corner. Also on that play to Brian Gatling is moving like maybe Time he's out. hurt as well. Time out. As he's walking back to the Milton sideline. Incomplete pass is, is the is the call on the field. Here just trusting his senior to go up and make a play. One on one matchup 50 50 ball right there initially had the ball fighting for it to knock it out there is Farrell. And you can see the ball moving wow. right there. The Milton fans believe they got a touchdown. The question is going to be was the ball moving. Did he ever have solid possession. Now right here the ball still moving in my mind. He takes it to the ground though. Now when he took it to the ground was he out of bounds. Let's see this angle. This will tell. That remember the call on the field is incomplete. And it's all about. He doesn't have possession the there in my mind. The process of the catch the entire process of the catch. Does he have this ball and you can see it starts to move right there at the end. As his body starts flipping over. All right Dave. Uh, the NFL really struggles with this possession <laughs> and catch of the ball. And they've spent many many days and years trying to define it. So I'm going to give you about 10 seconds to tell. No I'm just kidding. But what do you think. I, I, I thought at the end he might have had possession inbounds. So, so the way Wayne described it is pretty accurate. As he's going to the ground he has to survive the ground. OK. So when he hits the ground and the ball comes out that makes it incomplete. I agree. Now point of note Matt under two minutes. There's no red flag. There's no coach's challenge there. So all is from the booth here being reviewed in two minutes. Well I was wrong about this. Milton is going to try a field goal. A 28 yarder from the right hash. And they're going to run a fake. Warren the quarterback throws and it's intercepted. Oliver Skeen comes up with the interception right there at the goal line. Great reaction by the Walton defense. Just nowhere for the Warren to go with this ball as they go with the fake. He rolls out to the right right here. It's fake all the way. Skeen back in protect and, and coverage there right in front of Ryan G. Never fooled at all on the back end by the secondary on this play. Well their holder is their backup quarterback Dylan Warren certainly capable of throwing a pass right there. Just a great play by skiing continuing the theme of the entire night. The defense steps up and beats the offense. So now Jeremy Hecklinski a career defining situation right here. You got the ball at the one yard line 99 yards to go or at least to get it in field goal range. Can someone say John Elway. <laughs> John Elway. <laughs> I think he did something like this once in his career or Please twice the game clock to 57 seconds 57. Thank you. Walton has one timeout remaining. They'll likely hold that for the field goal attempt if that's what it comes down to. Heklinski, pocket, clean, throw, big six! Ja'Cory Stewart! Offense sales tickets. And defense wins championships. The three star Kansas commit coming up with the biggest play that he possibly can to end his career. The entire Milton team is running towards the tunnel. Flags all around on the field. What a break on the ball right there. Only a three man rush by Milton's deep front. Feeling the pressure, trying to get the ball out. Good after the play. And just playing center field there is Jakari Stewart for the interception pick six. Wow. <laughs>
We should have known the game would be decided on a defensive play. That penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Third interception of the night for Hecklinski. He had thrown three all season. The entire season he had only thrown through 14 games. And tonight this defense, these linebackers, these corners, these safeties have played the best game you can imagine in coverage. And the BAT is going to get up and in there. And things are starting to get chippy out there. A lot of jawing going on. Wow. As you can see, only a three-man rush. Good pressure there by Spencer. But really just not a strong ball. Trying to get the ball out there to Hunter Teal. And just playing center field right here is Ja'Cory Stewart for this interception. Breaking on the ball in front of Teal. For the pick six. What a moment for that senior linebacker that he will have for a lifetime. You know, he's a young man who transferred into the program, and when he got there, he was really raw. Coach Justin Miller, who played in the NFL, he's their linebacker coach. He's done a really good job molding Ja'Cory Stewart. Timeout, Milton. Turning Let's him into the out prospect, out. along with his God given gifts of athleticism, molding them, bringing them into control, defining them. And he makes the play of the game right there. Just a tremendous athlete. Great speed. He's, he's been part of the track team, playing linebacker, 210. Beautiful eyes right there, just reading Jeremy Hexlinski, playing center field, breaking on the ball like a receiver, coming back. And wow, that's all you can say right there. Yeah, and you know, Ben Reeves says he's a guy that after he committed to Kansas, which was during the summer, he lost a little bit of that hunger. And lost a little bit of that edge. And Coach Reeves says he became coachable again. He's been able to recalibrate and really soaking it all in like a sponge. Just a great job right there on Cullen. One of the top tight ends in the country, Hunter Teal. Getting his head around, breaking on the ball, soft hands for the interception. What a disappointing night this will turn out to be for the Walton Raiders who from the get go even going back to last season the end of last season all signs pointed to this this was going to be their year and it looks like they're going to come up at least one win short all coach Reeves talked about was making his team understand that they were a four quarter team. That's the mentality they have to take the field that in four quarters they were going to win the football game and that definitely is something that has stood out here tonight. So game not over yet. We still got 51 seconds to go. And Heklinski gets the ball back. But uh, Walton would need an absolute miracle a quick score here onside kick recovery. Another score against a secondary that has just been like a second set of clothes tonight covering these receivers. So first and 10 Raiders ball at the 48. Heklinski going to wind up and throw it as far as he can and Sonderman I believe that was him. Might have got hurt on the play grabbing. Yeah, he's got a calf muscle right there. That's uh, cramped up on him. Yeah, you can see it sticking up right there. Just tighten up on him. I'm out for an injured player. And Sonderman ended up being a great story. He really did. And he's going to go play his football at Jacksonville State. 
You know, he didn't even come out and play in his sophomore year. He he quit football, gave it up, was going to concentrate on baseball, decided to come back out, had a spectacular breakthrough junior season. This year he's battled injuries. He's had a broken hand twice, broke it in the summer, broke it again during the season or a broken thumb, something there. And, and then I think he actually ended up having a, a concussion after when he came back from that. And so he ended up missing a big chunk of his senior year because of injuries. And we wish him the best uh, in college, that's for sure. He's been stellar here in the playoffs yeah. for him with his, in his return. He has made some big plays, some touchdowns. Just feel one of those confident receivers that feel like when he's healthy, no one in a one-on-one -on -one situation can match up with him. Six total interceptions for Heklinski here in his senior year, and three of them coming on the big stage. Second down and ten. Heklinski chased out of the pocket, throws it to one of the coaches on the sideline. Caleb Bell once again with the pressure right in the face of the quarterback, forcing Heklinski to get out of the pocket, just nowhere to go with the ball on the back end. That's been the theme of this game, nowhere, especially deep down the field, to really go with the ball, other than the one big catch by Lloyd on the touchdown, just no production down the field. Yeah, third down and 10. Ball out, overthrows Teal. They'll get one more snap as we're down to 31 seconds. You know, as I watched this Milton team throughout the year and they started three and two, they lost to North Cobb pretty good. You know, they, the feeling of the season to me kind of reminded me of what they did in 2018. Lost a couple of games early. Everybody forgot about them. Nobody gave them much of a chance, you know, in the playoffs. They were all talking about, you know, the big five in the, you know, Colquitt County and Walton and Buford and Mill Creek and Carrollton. Nobody talked about Milton. It was the same kind of scenario back in 2018. Heck, Linsky might be the final throw and incomplete. And the ball will go over on downs. Once again, Heck Lindsey trying to work the ball down deep. Just tight coverage, as you can see. Jones, Sequoia breaking on that ball. And that it has definitely been just the most outstanding part of this defensive effort of Milton. The way they've been able to cover these receivers and just give Heck Lindsey nowhere to go with the ball. What a masterful game plan by the Milton Eagles on defense. David Willingham, their DC, their head coach, of course. Ben Reeves, defensive line coach Drew Connell, who was the defensive coordinator back when they won in 2018, went off to become a head coach, now back on the staff. They did something that I didn't think could be done. They shut down the Walton Raiders and the Milton Eagles are state champions for the second time in program history. They win it all here in 2023 when very few gave them a chance. Tremendous job. Coach Reeves, his coaching staff, David Willingham, O.C. Stevie. Jackson, a true team effort. When you watch this team this year, whichever side of the ball needed to be counted on for a particular game, that's kind of how they played this season. And today it was about the defense stepping up against the most high powered offense they had played all season and shutting them down. A lot of outstanding. High school football players just finished off their careers tonight, and a lot of them you'll be watching on Saturday in the very near future. Just fun to watch these teams tonight over the course of the season. Hunter Nickel, though, or uh, Hunter, <laughs> Luke Nickel, he's going to be back. Luke Nichols, C.J. Wiley, Ryan G. That whole combination right there is going to be back. And they'll be in next 5A year. next year. <laughs> They've been reclassified to a lower classification. They'll be in 5A with the same region with Roswell and Gainesville. 
And you look at even up at the offensive line for the offensive linemen four of the five will be back as well. So very dangerous and formidable to T.J. Lester. Amari Anderson all these guys are back. Yeah. Tristan Payne. They got the makings of a, a back to back. But tonight they're going to celebrate. Their second. All of them coming in the last six years. No one would have guessed a decade ago that in 10 years you're going to be talking about the Milton Eagles winning their second state championship. You talking about the Milton Eagles that have never done anything in 70 years. Well the last six last seven have really been good. You can tell talking to their head coach coach Reeves that he, he knew he had the team. He had the kind of players that he could get focus and get to show out show up on Friday nights in, in this championship game. He could bring home another trophy and exercise some of those demons you're talking about that Milton doesn't belong. Luke Nickel 19 of 25 passing for 201 one touchdown only 10 yards rushing and a touchdown just did a really solid job not spectacular by any means by his own standards but a really solid job you know commanding the team the offense made a lot less turnovers than Walton which was the killer for them tonight kind of shifted himself to more of a game manager tonight didn't try to go out and just win the game on his own make a lot of foolish passes down the field just really was OK with taking the little routes the short routes throwing out on the edge to Gatlin getting the ball to Esley in the slot was big and really key for the offense when they needed something big to happen. Milton finishes up at 13 and 2. They finished the season on a nine game winning streak. Now they're getting their picture taken. Walton preparing to get up there and get the state runner up trophy. It's going to be bitter for Walton because they know they didn't play their best tonight. It's one thing when you lose and you gave it your best and you walked away and you felt like I did everything I could but they're going to look back and remember a lot of mistakes that they made tonight that they typically and characteristically didn't do. And the biggest was as we had talked about the turnovers. It was a, a game that they felt like they had a great chance of winning if they didn't turn the ball over. That's how they got to that 14 and 0 record coming into the game. And tonight that just fell apart for them and really is what gave Milton life and energy to get back into the game. So I think they're waiting for a few of the Walton players who may have gone to the locker room to come back out for the presentation of the state runner up. You know it's a it's a nice trophy but it's never the trophy that you want. Yeah it's just a, <laughs> and I think that's a lot of the frustration is taking a little time to get Walton to accept this trophy you can see they are frustrated as they take the stage nothing to celebrate. Loda High Yugokwe. expectations they had. Yeah. Loda Yugokwe number 54 he's committed to Yale. He's got a big college career in front of him academically and on the football field. Hudson Pruitt number 61 the left guard Jeremy Heklinski to his right and then Ashton Woods right there number seven. He's a big dude. He'll be playing linebacker at North Carolina. And Daniel Bruner gets the trophy. And so they'll step off the podium.
And now it'll be the uh, Milton Eagles turn. And ben Reeves will see who they send up there. I imagine that DeBron Gatling will be one of the guys. <laughs> You know, it's funny about DeBron Gatling. I remember when he was a freshman and then head coach Adam Clagg telling me, we've got this freshman wide receiver on our team. You see him right there, number one. We got that freshman wide receiver on our team. He's going to be maybe the best wide receiver I've ever coached in my life. Outstanding receiver, great hands, great speed, size. As you can see right behind him, the man of the moment, Ja'Cory Stewart. Mark Esley, Jack Lawson, Luke Nickel up on stage. All right, let's send it down to John Nelson. Thank you very much, Matt Stewart. Time to present the last trophy of a very, very busy three days here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. First and foremost here in 7A Absolute Class, Raider Valley. Once again, thanks to the Walton Raiders for a fantastic 2023. But it's now time to present the last trophy of the three days and to do it, the executive director of the Georgia High School Association, Dr. Robin Hines. Thank you. First, I would like to congratulate Walton on a great year. Great job, guys. We're proud of you. And thank you for all the fans that came out to support them. You were awesome tonight. Thank you. But on behalf of Alpha Insurance and the Georgia High School Association, it's a great honor, Coach, to present you with the 7A State Championship Trophy. You wanted to turn early season losses into lessons. Biggest lesson, winning a game 15, and you did that tonight. We did that. Uh, everybody counted us out all year except those players, those coaches, and that community. And that's all we needed. That's all we needed. And now we're state champions. Defense did it for you, clamping down on one of the toughest talents here in the state of Georgia in that Walton offense. I just, incredible, you know, task they had ahead of them to, to stop that offense. And uh, we just asked them to go out, empty their tanks like they do. And they did that. And, and just, we'll see where we're at in the fourth quarter. And, and it, the ball bounced our way tonight. OC, the last time it happened, now you're the boss this time around. What's it been like to see your career arc and this program grow to where it has gone from that first championship to tonight? Uh, I say this all the time. I'm such a small piece of this. So many great coaches, so many great players. It, it takes everybody. I'm such a small piece. But there is something magical about wearing those wings in the bins on a Wednesday night. And those wings now get to fly home with a championship trophy. Milton, second time in your lifetime. Champs in 7A. Let's send it back upstairs to put a bow on it all. It's Matt and Wayne. All right, Nelly. Thank you very much. And stick around. We got the Georgia Cotton Commission player of the game coming up. And uh, we're going to give the towel and the cap to Ja'Cory Stewart, who had a fabulous game. Seven total tackles, four solo tackles, and he ended up having the game-clinching pick six interception. The moment of the night where the team, and the entire team ran into the tunnel. <laughs> I mean, what a big play for the senior linebacker who has really shined for them this season. This, this defense just can't talk enough about the production and, and the challenge they faced and, and really rose to the occasion, especially on that back end in the secondary. Ja'Cory Stewart, Benton, Lawson, just shined tonight for this team and, and accepted their coaches is challenge and Ben Reeves. It was uh, it was really fun to watch. Not fun for Walton fans, I know, but I mean just the the defensive game plan, just from a football mentality, whether you had a dog in the fight or not, to watch what Milton was able to do with the Walton offense. Now we send it down to Nikki. All right, I've got our Georgia Cotton Commission player of the game. No surprise here, it's Ja'Cory Stewart. Ja'Cory, first off, I heard that there was a video floating around in May, and you were saying we're the best team in the state. Your teammates on this field, I heard them after winning this going, we knew we had it. We weren't the underdogs. What can you say about that performance? Yes, ma'am, great performance. Back in January when we lost in the Final Four, we lost in the Final Four on the 1st of December. 
I told him we came back in January of lifting. I was breaking it down on state championship. It was in January. I instilled it in us. All we had to do was execute it. And when we got in the playoffs, we came together as a brotherhood and we executed it. It really been in us. All we had to do was execute it and we did that and found a way. And my goodness, I mean, execution came at the most critical point in the game. Walk me through what was going through your mind with that defensive pick six, especially after that fake field goal that went awry and you, you got it back. When the fake field goal happened, I was like, oh, God, I was like, oh. But one thing about it, like Coach say, defense got to do what defense do because offense pulled us through a lot. All, Cole quit, they pulled us through. Grayson, they pulled us through. So my mind was I seen him run the, I seen him run out. He hadn't already ran the whip right before, so he went out. I, I just, I'm like, he ain't running the whip because they had already ran it. So I just went in. He threw it because nobody was open, and he threw it, and I just baited him, and I caught it. And just, just all God right there, just God blessing me with that opportunity. And you are blessed with an opportunity to play at the next level at Kansas, and I know how special and how important that is to you and your family when it comes to education. How excited are you to go to the next level as a Jayhawk? Very excited. I love my Jayhawk community. I love my coaches, and I'm just happy to be there, happy to be blessed with that opportunity as well to go on to the next level and make history. Absolutely. Last question for you. It's your senior year. You and this team, you guys have been through so much. What's, what's your message to Coach Reeves and your fellow teammates tonight after winning another state title? I love them. I love them. That's all I can say is I love them. I'm proud of them. Like, like that, you know what I'm saying? They brought me in. And, and they treated me very well. From me being doubted all my life, they, they, they brought me in and gave me a chance and blessed me with an opportunity. And I love the Milton community, love all my coaches, love the parents. I just love everybody in this community, a great community. Well, second title for Milton, first for you. Ja'Cory, nobody should doubt you and count you out, man. You showed up and showed out, and especially when it counted. Congratulations. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right, Matt Wayne, I mean, <laughs> Did we say we were going to get a good game or what? We just didn't know it was going to come in like the last 30 seconds of the game. Yeah, we didn't know it was going to be on the defense's shoulders either. That's what it turned out to be. I always love listening to our player interviews. And if you listen to what Ja'Cory said there, Wayne, he explained what happened on the interception. That's because he did his homework during the week. He explained to you he'd already seen one play, so he knew it was going to be the other. And so it wasn't by mistake that he was there for that interception. He said he baited Hecklinski to throw that route, kind of played off, and when he saw it, he broke on the ball. And this defense shined tonight and exemplified why they say defense wins championships and Milton has won the 7 a championship. Yeah, that's what I love about, you know, football. I mean, it is there's a lot of work that's put into it in January, the weight room, the conditioning, stuff that nobody ever sees, all the homework and the film study that you have to do in the week to get ready, not just the practice. That's why football is the greatest game ever made. <laughs> Way a pleasure working with you again this season. We're going to wrap it up here at the Benz. Another great year on GPB. And we're going to take a look at all the great folks who made our season possible, not just the last three days, but throughout the entirety of the season. Just a shout out to a couple that I work with all the time very closely. Wayne Gandy, of course, our producer, Glenn Diamond, our VP of Sports, Kevin Gerke, Steve Graham, A.J. Keene, Ryan Bowles, Nikki Noto Palmer, Wiley Bauer, John Nelson, Hannah Gooden, Larry Smith the last couple of days, all these people, Rusty Mansell, Dave Reynolds does a great job for us in the finals with all the uh, replay review and all the people behind the scene. I told you about the people up front, but all the people behind the scene, these are the real warriors. These are the people that make it shine. So congratulations to them. I love working with them. Final score here tonight in our final game of the season. Milton wins the state championship, beats Walton 31-21. Eagles the champions for the second time in program history. Congrats to them, and thanks for watching us all season long.
Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is presented by the Governor's Office of Highway Safety, reminding you to be safe on every trip. Buckle up, Georgia. Riding down the road and you're doing just fine When a car in front of you crosses over the line They're in your space, not looking at your face Distracted drivers all over the place Say, we will, we will buckle up Sing it Say, we will, we will buckle up This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. What you doing? Hey, just finishing this claim to get Dave back on the road. Nice. I wonder what Dave's doing. We've got you covered. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by DBHDD. Win by learning about safe usage of prescription opioids. Half of the nation's opioid overdoses happen right at home because people don't understand the dangers of taking an Oxy or Perk with a glass of alcohol for stress or to sleep. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. Yeah, yeah. Yeah! Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh I, I don't know about the TV, but uh, the burgers are ready. Yeah! Ooh, burgers, right. burgers? I want a burger. All right, I'll line up. Let's go. Uh, uh.